to some RimWorld. We've got the version 1.5. This isn't the first time I messed with it. Oh, and good night, Strider. Thank you so much. Uh, you can just play P Music from YouTube. No mods needed. I can, and I probably should, because P Music is excellent. I'm not gonna fight with it for the moment. But we um, we were doing the whole tile challenge. That has basically been ended, uh, pretty much entirely, just because you know 1.5 dropped. I mean, even even if 1.5 dro hadn't dropped when we got the announcement that you know within like about a month that the major update was coming, we knew we weren't gonna finish then that because i i haven't i was gonna try to stick to doing rimworld only like once a week but like right now i'm kind of waffling on what even to play on the channel at the moment um which is a problem a lot of people have is all of us are like looking over the horizon going oh there's so many games i can't wait to play um as it didn't you start a run already in this mode yes it died <laughs> we did the dead um so Maybe we'll do a Mechanator run. Because I think I think what I want this run to be based... He well, no, because the Mechanator won't work with the caves because you don't get a mining mech to, like, way letter. You completed the dead run? <laughs> yes, the dead run was finished. Um, yep, ended uh, by poorly built box. Oh, no, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't that the box is built poorly. Oh, man. I made a mistake. The Adam and Eve run? Oh yeah, no, we did that a while back. That was where we had two pawns and we built up an entire colony from that. Um, honestly, most of these aren't going to be relevant anymore. Um, yeah, we did that challenge. We ended up having like two people had like 28 kids or some nonsense. It was really ridiculous. Um, we could go Rich Explorer. Let's just do the classic. I haven't done the classic crash land in absolutely forever. You can't wait till I can do a dead undead run with a new DLC. Have they specifically said that there's going to be actual undead, or did they just imply it? No, nah, let's just let's just do a tribe. I like tribe. Um, we're gonna do it not on the ridiculously difficult thing. Do 100%. Leave everything else the way it is. Actually, uh, oh, I thought there was one for mountains. Wait, wasn't there a slider for how mountainous it was before? Did they get rid of that? It's fine, I don't actually care that much. It may have been a mod that I just don't remember. Yeah, no, that was um that was a ridiculous one. It was it was a fun one. The idea was like make it generations on. Hmm. Yeah, okay, they did mention goals. Gotcha, gotcha. I know it was heavily implied that there probably was. I couldn't remember if they actually said there's an undead mod, but it's not happening. Yeah, it's probably just a mod. So we don't have like the mini map mod or whatever. That shows us the preview. But what I kind of want to do is I want to find no, not tropical rainforest. Gross. I want to find a tile that's got a nice bunch of mountains surrounding it. So we do have special features caves. I don't... I want to try to avoid that. I want to find a mountainous tile that's well surrounded. So we should get a lot of mountain around us. Because the idea of what we have is to basically make like this big like mountain library thing. That, that'd be potentially a game ending one. Why are all the ones that are fully surrounded caves? Because normally with like the, um, that'll work. That's a good one. Yeah, temperate, not, not caves is the primary. That'll be fine. There's a little pollution nearby, but not too bad. Year round grow season. That's actually pretty solid. Um, we'll do this. I'm going to go with Prolicizer to start with. I'm going to leave most of that alone, I think. Uh, so it's very, very much like brands mods turned into dlc i have no idea who brands mods are. there were clones and maybe undead in the dlc yeah there was um they had the doppelganger kind of thing clothing restrictions oh yeah i'll turn those off i actually the clothing restrictions for your titles is one of the things i don't like because you're gonna want helmets and all that um let's not 
Okay, just a general jogger. That's fine. Actually, I, I misread that. That was masochist. I can live with masochist. Uh, I thought it was meanderist, and I was like, no. I'm not dealing with that. Neurotic is actually low-key good. Underground or Sanguine will be really good for this. Thank you the follow. Welcome to the stream. Very neurotic Night Owl. Okay. So we're lacking in plants, research, and medical. We have... Two, two potential melee pawns. And three ranged. We've got a crafter. We've got our cook and mining person. We've got a crafter. We've got a construction and medical person. That's interesting. So this person has a passion for medical, but it's not marking that I have a passion for medical. That feels like that feels like that should be marked as us having a passion for medical. So that's actually not that bad. So it's really we don't have a passion for intellectual or plants. Let's see, they made it where you could set clothing, food, drug policies that you could use from one game to the next without mods. You might play RimWorld again. Spending 15 minutes. Wait, I can do what now? I can I can set those to be like permanently. Where where does that happen? Cause I want to set that right. We'll we'll worry about that. Okay, so we've got those. So yeah, so we're we're lacking. No, if you could. Ah, I see. Gotcha. I was about to say, it's like, wait a second. Why has this not the, been the feature I've been hearing people ranting and raving before? Um. Yeah, no, I thought it was, it would, um, show much. All right, so the hope is that this would be a fairly, okay, this will work. I'm so spoiled with my geological formations, mods, and all that. Being able to get, like, all sorts of bizarre and fun tiles. That's fine. But the reason I wanted to do this is I want to make kind of our own, um, oh, I see what's going to happen here. Um, actually, this will work perfectly. It's already kind of already in the right shape. Wait a second. Is that a hidden room back there? Where's some, well, first of all, let's get you all equipped. All right. So who is our melee people? Your shooter. You'll be a shooter. All right. So you get the equa. You go ahead and grab the jade knife. You grab the pila. You grab the bow. You grab the other bow. They gave us a pair of huskies. They gave us effectively a breeding pair of huskies. So what I want to check is I think that might be hollow back there. Okay, it's not. Or if it is, it's hidden that it is. Because you can actually check to see if there's caves and all that back there. If this goes and makes like the... Yeah, so there was... There's a hollow spot back here, for example. And the way you can tell that is if it keeps the icon of the weapon, it's solid. Yeah, this is just like a little pocket of rooms. But you could do that to, like, check for different things. I'm surprised I actually haven't gotten rid of that. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't, like, change your runs or anything. But it is one of those things that you could, you could absolutely see them, like, nerfing that you can do that. All right. So let them start that. Um, we'll want to go to grow zone here. Set you to be rice. And leave them potato for a minute. Uh, meanwhile, let's go to your schedules and click all the passions to start with. And now let's switch to priorities.
Okay, so who's doing what? So you're you're mining. So I'll have you mine and do art. Um, you're going to grow things. You're our construction person. You're also our cook. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, you will handle and craft. Hunting will be low priority for everyone. You'll also craft. And honestly, just do your best, I guess, in the research, whatever you can. Um, Orange is the only researcher. Orange isn't even a researcher. There is no, there is no researcher. They're all, they're all terrible at it. All right. Meanwhile, I can go up here. Dan is still drafted. Oh, thank you. So working on all that. So the cat doesn't get to stay. But the others will. Um, meanwhile, let's go ahead and start naming people. Alright, we can go to you and... We've got Harry. And we've got Nihai Lord. And I'll read up what each person is once we get through them. I'm just going to get through the names real fast. Actually, I could say... So Nihai Lord is the animal slash um, crafter. Uh, Harry is our doctor who does our construction. And then we got... Here, Liz, who is our cook. And we've got Wait, Jaguar, who is going to be a crafter. And then we've got Ichi Tenma, who is going to be a crafter. Like, if we get to the point of, um... If we get to the point of the crafting being, like, the big thing, we've got crafters. We are, we are way past good on crafters. Here we get that. Guess you'll have to build our prison? You mean hospital? <laughs> I actually, honestly, Hunter lacks, oh, you're still set to hunt. There you go. Like, actually, it's pretty rare I, um, capture people and recruit them anymore since, since biotech. With being able to have kids and, like, all the events going on, there's just so many ways to get pawns that you don't, you don't have to, like, just grab and imprison everyone and recruit them. They still do it from time to time, certainly. Kids, kids are powerful. I, I wouldn't say they're overpowered, only because of the time investment to get them there. That they're so fragile early on that it's kind of one of those things like, okay, do they get super strong later? Yes. But they gotta live till they reach that later part. And sometimes that can be pretty, pretty big ask, actually. Oh yeah, no, it's a big investment, but that's the thing. You can also have the thing where you invest all that time, you make that pawn, and you're like, man, I got, you know, a jogger, nimble, you know, tough pawn, and then they get one-tapped by a lancer, even though they're wearing marine armor. You're like, that is Rimworld. I may turn them on the vampires? No. I can't stand the vampires. 100%, and Rimworld will see to it. Yeah, so it's those things like... Are they powerful? Yes, I will. I will absolutely agree, without question, that the children are very powerful. But also, 
Rimworld's gonna straight up troll you. Uh, nine passions? Was it that high? I didn't think, because I, I know the first, the first age up you get nothing for, where they become a toddler. Um, then from the toddler to the first one, I didn't think they got, like, the full credit of everything. Um, it's like, there's one you get, like, two passions, one you get, like, three passions, that kind of thing. It's still a lot. Is it you grow clone death watching super soldiers? Anything in Rimworld is overpowered your type. Yeah, this is absolutely true. Like if you if you abuse the uh the xenogenetics, like you can make people who never sleep and work extra hard. You know, you have to take some negative, but that's fine. I'm being picky about the layout here, and I'm waiting till they mine more of this, and I shouldn't be doing that. Because my plan is to put the kitchen stuff over here. You think you can get all skills? Um, Nine passion is huge, three traits. Yeah. Now the catch is usually you don't end up putting it in like 11 different things. I haven't, I haven't often gone for a ch kid as a generalist. It's not a bad idea. Um, usually I'll be like, okay, you're getting like two three points of passion into like your doctoring or whatever but yeah i know you could spread it out to like everything evenly but i i have a tendency to be like all right what is the main thing i want this person to do when they aren't doing that what's the backup is usually the way i focus my points and then usually the last one will go into like shooting or melee or whatever All right. Oh, meanwhile, uh, we had a Night Owl in here, didn't we? So Nigh High Lord is a Night Owl, and Night Owl is what? 11 to whatever? 11 to 18? Okay, so schedule. 11 to 18 is when you sleep. Um, But one thing we're going to do is once we start getting books is I'm going to have dedicated re recreation time. Um... Part of part of me, it would be impossible to do this realistically because of how how long it take to get books. I kind of actually want to have a game that we literally don't use a research bench; we just use the books. Now the thing is, I don't know the breadth of the topics covered. I know like electricity is covered, and you get like books for the different research. I just don't know if like this entire tree is a, like I don't know if there's a book for Starship Reactor. Books don't go deep. Gotcha. Cause I know I know I saw a book for electricity. But yeah. Only normal bench researches? Fair enough. It's kind of a bummer, honestly. I could I like the idea of being able to build up your giant library of of stuff and like not actually having a researcher at all. You just your colony learns about everything by reading others' work. You know, something, something built on the shoulder of giants and yada yada. But yeah, so that's exactly what they're talking about, saying like the legendary ones are like 500 XP per hour. Yeah, so I like the idea of just making the giant library all right Reading seems to boost intellect as well. I hadn't heard that one. It makes sense. Now 
no two skill legendary books though i don't know what you mean by that are you saying you can only ever get one legendary skill book like there's just a quest or something you do and once you've got it you can't get another i do wonder if when we um if when we get the dlc if you'll be able to make books So you'll actually have a person who can write, you know, write a book about a skill and, you know, it can RNG give a skill book up to the level of that person. A skill book can give a single skill when read or two skills. Which is not one of his pawns got int. I'm not sure if the book was about. Yeah, it could it could have been about that. All right, so we've got our basic production room. Well, it does sound like I'm going to have to have that. Um, and we can go to furniture. We'll just do that. You like to think of all the things as new starting points, which mods will make better, more diverse. Oh yeah, no, I like I like the idea of like really just leaning in on the book thing. You had to wake up for five hours, uh, and five hours you can't get to sleep. I know that pain so incredibly well, and I I wish I didn't, but that sucks. I do I do hope you find that sleep you're trying to get. We'll wait to dig out where the freezer and all that's gonna be till later. Um, we'll start here, and for right now, do seven by nine on both sides here, because we'll make like a common room and a temple, which will be our temporary basic barracks or whatever. So we have two idle people. Which I'm assuming are going to be our crafters and whatever. Just can't do anything right now. Die, High Lord. Yeah, it's our two people who've got crafting on their schedule. Who just there's nothing to craft yet. Right now. If they can't find literally anything else to do, they can start doing that. You always like to prioritize bedrooms and turn the start barracks into the rec room. Yeah, usually, like, I, I don't mind putting, like, this is a barracks temporary. And that'll either become, like, the rec or dining room or the temple one way or the other. I do kind of that same thing where you have the, um, the rooms kind of pull double duty. Yeah, we're about to run out of pemmican, but they're also right about to finish planting this field, and I've got them queued up to pull up a bunch of berries. And then once we start getting that sorted out, we'll get the next field done. Oh, we need a research product. I'm so used to having random research, no research, that it takes a while to be like, wait, you want me to do what now? All right. I won't build that yet. So it's 13. I don't have need for those materials quite yet. So it's 13.
All right, what I'm trying to do is... Oh, wait, that's mining. What I'm trying to do is to plan this out. Yeah, so that should be fine. That's one over, one over. It's one over, one over. And this will be fine. Because I need support columns. Actually, we'll put the support columns there, 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 and there. All right. Cause this will be our giant library for the for the start, but that won't be something I'm gonna build yet. That's the reason it's not connected, so I can't reach Equa yet. Just amuses me putting a mega screen TV behind the altar and reassure reusing the floor seats. Yeah. You can do some weird stuff with RimWorld. Alright. Yeah, so the goal is to build like just a giant library and just put all the books we can into it. I'll make like a little reading spot in the middle. And then I just want to build a giant library and just any chance we get for more books, we're taking them. Our entire theme is that we want all of the human knowledge. Especially the cursed stuff we definitely shouldn't have. That that's my favorite knowledge. Um, bills. Simple meals. Do until you have ten. Pemmican forever. Society forever. I'll lock that door open. Uh, how do books work as far as how much they can be used, etc.? So, my understanding is books never, like, wear out or anything. Unless you, like, leave them on the floor or out in the open or, like, rain, like any other item. Um, they just get used, like, recreation, like the hoopering and all that kind of stuff. But, um, what ends up happening... I need to put that in there so you have multiple entertainment types. Hey! Snuffy is pregnant. Aww. Trained the doggos. But, um... You can just keep reading them forever and ever. Now, that said, there are some books that say, like, I will teach you up to skill level 8 or whatever. I would assume once you hit skill level 8, it just, they kind of do the I can't learn anything by reading this type deal. Need meat for doggos? No, diet vegetables. Why are you lying to me? In real life, do dogs do need meat. But in video game logic, it's fine. You can raise your doggos on potato. Do you know if skill books give recreation? Yes, they do. Um, and then there are recreation books that give you more recreation faster. A camera is like double or three times the rate or something like that. Oh, and when we did that, did that make that part of our home? It did. Yep, I grabbed the table. I need to make a place to put it. Alright. It's a steel table, so actually, what is your beauty as a steel table? One. Okay, I mean, it's not negative, so whatever. Is that silver that Harry is mining? Yes.
Uh, meanwhile, we'll go here. Kibble. Details. If you run into any meats that we don't want, we'll use that. But basically, only make it with meats if we have, like, meats that'll make our people happy. Or make our people mad. Then we can worry about that. Hey, they gave us a wooden club. Oh, no, actually, why? It's Ni oh, Nihide Lord cannot do research, that's right. They're gonna be a dedicated crafter, we just don't have anything for them to craft yet. So they're kinda just chilling, and they also can't mine. Um, so we're all good there. So we do have... We don't have food. Start getting some of them to run around and hopefully uh, bring more food in here. Actively, try, actively trying to make food happen. We've got people who are working on harvesting all the berries they can find in the map. And all that. More of them harvesting berries. Hey, she wolf, how's it going? Oh, posture check. Yep, I can do that. need to keep people hunting as much as possible. Nihai Lord also cannot hunt. Come on. Yeah, so we got people starving, which is a problem. Got them queued up to grab all the berry bushes they can. Just get any food in here. Lost tribe? Yep. They just gave us a pair of huskies to begin with, so the huskies are really hitting our food supply pretty hard. Um, which is why we're struggling a little bit. You have four people hunting at four? Yes, I do. And they're hunting. 
Got got two of them out there doing it right now. Actually, one of them. Yep. No, I'm I'm more what you meant by four. All right. So we need a name for faction as well as it's gonna be the Grand Library. The librarians. Done. Man, yeah, no, that's the whole thing. I've got multiple people who we keep seeing over here idle, so they actually are getting stuff. <laughs> the book nerds TM. Oh, there is an exterior space out there. That doesn't make me happy. Yeah, so we'll just juggle this a little bit until we hit the point that, um... Okay, we'll just struggle a little bit on the food front until we get the rice and the potato starter to pop up. Once that's fine, we'll be good. It is going to be a little bit of ping pong back and forth because we got to feed the animals and ourselves and we're not particularly good at hunting and we got a lot of people who are not particularly good at plants who are trying to get berries for us. It's fine. As long as our mood holds up, that's the real question. All right, let's go to our assignment, manage food, lavish, no raw food. Okay. So I went right for the complex furniture on the opening, which I usually don't, but that's fine. I wonder what the bookshelves, I didn't look at the bookshelves have to be against a wall or they can be just anywhere. I'm assuming anywhere. Because my plan is like literally just make rows and rows of bookshelves down here to an obnoxious level. Let's let's see what that corner holds. Okay, so it's just a little pocket. That's fine. You just understood the name? Uh-huh. Are being attacked immediately by a person with club. Don't ruin my party, man. Making me call off my party. Where? Why are. Why are. Leave the dogs out of this! The dogs are over there minding their own business, and you gotta go and try and murder them. That's right, you crawl out of here.
Yep, crawling is the thing now. 1.5. Yeah, it's basically when they're downed, but it's, um, there's like, there's kind of like a medium spell of when they're downed, but not, not to such a degree that they're like dying. So like, if you have someone who's downed because pain, they can crawl. But if you have someone who's like down, like dead down. Is he worth keeping? I mean, I don't have the no, not particularly, because keep in mind they're a uh, they're a waster, so I need to be able to get them their drugs or they die, so I'm not gonna bother fighting it. All right. I mark one of these as an animal medical spot. You never ran research? No, because I'm not doing the, um... Because we are doing 1.5 and not... The mods haven't caught up yet. There's that. Get tasty... Tier? Psyched tier early? Yep. We'll probably get all that. Right now we're in that initial just getting food handled. Is where we're currently at. All right. Chesteru, Chesty LaRue on their five stream streak saying, thanks for streaming, girl. No problem. I do, uh, I am happy that you, uh, you're enjoying it, all that stuff, and check it out and catching all those streams. It means a lot. All right. Surely people eat the tea and the leaves too. When you get hungry enough. I don't think we'll end up keeping the steel table long term, but for the short term, I'll keep it. Actually, let's be very grand with this. Um, we don't have anyone who has a title yet. I'm trying to remember for the really high titles. Was it 30, 30 tiles that a bedroom needs to be to qualify for a... Um, it'd be like 3 by 10. So that should be plenty. Cause that'd be 40 tiles. Okay. Is 
It's 30 space, uh, so not 30 tiles, but should be about right. Yeah, so this is actually like uh, 38 tiles or whatever right now, the rooms I made that size. They're still struggling on food for the moment, but that rice is right about to be ready to harvest. And the moment we can harvest that rice, then the food problem goes away for the time being. Because I keep ping-ponging back and forth in the meantime. Alright. And I'd like us to finish doing the, um, researching the better beds, because then I can start putting those in here. The Count's bedroom must be 30 tiles, which is a minimum precedent of 80, and must include a great table and dresser. Yeah, the big thing was to have the rooms the size, so if any of our people do end up getting titles or whatever, I don't even have to think about it. We're just good. Alright, so with that, we can start expanding our farm. Because it should be good there. And now grow entirely too much. To the point we can't possibly handle growing this much. Okay. Two con plantations? Did it make two con? Oh, you're supposed to be heal root. There we go. Thank you. This is way more than I should be growing. Um, in the meantime, one of the things I'm going to need to do... Actually, you know what? So, Meteorite, we can do with that in a minute. Alright, you're gonna try to sleep? That's good. Sleeping's good. Um, who is our highest social? It's no, it's no one good. Itchy Tenma. Itchy Tenma is our best social. And once again, I have a colony who just doesn't do this whole social thing particularly. Word Serenity. Ice. Manhunting Raccoon, so grab everyone like this over here. Good enough. So I'm thinking, is we're gonna try making a um a kill box that incorporates the side here as well? Cause if I make a kill box that like lines up like this, where this is the entrance and it goes along the side there, then I could potentially have it where if we have like the actual place that my people stand through the rock back here, it means either they breach the side of the kill box, they're still kind of in the kill box. I don't know if that'll even work the way I want it to. 
but I'm down to find out. Actually, let's not do it that way. Because my only reservation with putting it here is that I lose all this rich soil, but I think that's probably fine. So we're going to start getting that built up over there. We're going to change this wall here the way I put it. So it's going to be here and Actually, it's going to be there instead. Alright, that should do. myself room unintentionally to make this work. Yeah, I'll drop them right about the middle of the kill box, give or take a little bit. It'll be slightly off center, but that's fine. And I could like wind that around wherever we gotta wind it. All right, and this is just to slow them down as best we can. set you dandelions. Right now I'm going to leave it to cut but no sowing or they can knock down trees. I want to change that out later uh, but right now that's fine. Um, we are planting a ridiculous amount of stuff in here. We got our potatoes coming in. We do have people who are hunting which is good. Meanwhile you're almost done down here with this space. Go orders in here. This is going to be something that's going to be painful. Just to smooth the train in that room. Ah, there's a change. When you choose smooth floor now, it just smooths the floor. That smoothing the floor and windows are separate things now. I can get behind that. Oh, floor and windows, they say? Yeah, floor and walls. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, you wish windows were in the base game? Yeah, it could be fun.
Oh, who is our... Oh, right. We'll have, we'll have Kira Liz try and behave as the researcher when they're not doing the other things. Oh, you're our mining person. You're never going to have time for that. Um... Construction person's pretty... We'll just say anyone who's got availability does the research. Until we get a more dedicated person. Windows in a mountain base? Yeah, you can have like a little ser like a little service window so you know a person in the kitchen can like pass the food to the window so you can get in the dining room without have to walk around. And there's always the outside area you could have windows. Like leading out to the like the cliff face or whatever. Don't start with that one, please. Start here. I do want you to plant all those, but any of these four are the ones I want you to start with. Then you can worry about all the other stuff. You can't remove overhead mount? No. So you try doing a one wide freezer room uh, with doors each side so the cooks can put meals in and the dining room meals out. That could be interesting. All right, so there is a skill trainer for crafting and an unknown threat. I'm not going to worry about that. Honestly, honestly, a lot of these ones, the cache of supplies, it's very rare that I'm like, ooh. Like once in a while they'll be like, hey, how about mech resurrection serum? You're like, yes, we're going right now. <laughs> Like, drop it, everything. We're going for it right this second. But that's pretty rare that we get anything quite that impressive. Alright, so we got everyone moving into a proper bedroom so we won't get as much, you know, disturbed sleep penalty and all that. The, oh, the freezer with hot side into door bug is still in 1.5. It just deletes the heat. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you can order smooth surface and it'll do everything. If you choose the floor one, it'll do just the floors. And if you do structure, it'll do just the walls. It is nice, though, that they have, like, differentiated with all that. Why does the ground look different in the bedroom? You mean the two different colors? That's because, um, this one is where it's not telling me the type of stone. It'll be, like, sandstone versus, yeah, it's sandstone versus granite. You mean where the rubble is? Oh, that's just they haven't cleaned up the rubble yet. That's just debris on the ground. You see in the bottom left it says rock rubble. They'll get there. We want them to start working on smoothing those rooms when they're not building this up here. Oh, don't build those out of steel. I hate it does this. It's you'll run out of something and it'll like auto switch in the middle of it to a different material. I really, really hate it when it does that. I've wasted so much steel because of that. It doesn't seem to always do it either, which is what throws me off about it. Because it was like an always thing. You'd be like, okay, just I did the thing. Now I need to do the next thing. It's fine. And we get a group of visitors. Oh, we don't have a spiritual guide. Um, ideology. Good enough for right now.
All right. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't happen super often. Or I would, like, really, really get bent out of shape over it. But it's every once in a while. All right. Need to cue that wall for smoothing. Oh, and they're also letting us queue up wall that's fully enclosed. Normally you couldn't do that either. Beforehand, it was like you couldn't queue that to mine or like, sorry, you could queue it to mine. You couldn't queue it to, um, to smooth walls that you couldn't directly see. Still catching fire? We can check. I'd imagine it still can. Flammability, 40%. Yep, still catches fire. Need more storage? Oh, I know. I'm well aware. We're researching complicated furniture now. We're still building out our rooms. I'm trying to remember. I decided I want to lay out the storage room. that'll hold up on its own. Yeah. So what I could do is we can go over here, extend this room this way, poke a hole there, and that'll be our storage room. You can probably leave that door open at this point. I mean, well, let's have you fix the, uh, fix the kill box here real fast. So kill box is functional, it doesn't have like the long maze leading into it kind of thing. You tell me some pink blob on the ground is supposed to be or while room world players casually do whatever. Pink blob on the ground? I'm missing where the pink blob on the ground comes up from. Unless you're talking about like the uh, the new DLC with like the wall of flesh kind of thing or whatever. Which the idea with that is the wall of flesh is like an all-consuming thing. That it just grows and grows and grows. Until it consumes literally everything. 
But also, keep in mind, you have the choice of doing those things in RimWorld. No one is forcing you or demanding you. I mean, actually, chat does all the time. But, generally speaking... What is tacoism? One who believes in tacos. Tacos are a mass culinary delusion. It's a delusion I never want to get cured from. Oh, here. Uh, don't store raw resources there, uh, but you may store them out here. So you don't keep wooden steel inside the building. All right. Wood rots outside? Yeah, I, I don't care. It takes forever for wood to rot, and then you'll get more wood. You never tried tacos? Do you hear they taste like chicken? If they're a chicken taco, and I mean, honestly, not that much actually. Not that much actually, because usually they're very heavily seasoned with stuff like cumin and all that. So you don't notice what type of protein it is so much as like, like the protein matters more for the texture than the flavor. You're gonna carry the day through with like cumin and cayenne and all those. Tacos the hard shell, right? I mean, you can have hard or soft shell. Delete disease malaria at the exact same second we get raided. Literally, literally the exact same second. Keeping in mind, we don't have a competent doctor here. Oh, I thought they were going to attack the people that ran through. That's not helpful. Um, please hurry. Put out those fires real fast. You... It's it's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm not feeling very confident on the malaria thing. We've got nothing but herbal medicine. Why? Please stop crawling into my home. I don't want you to crawl into my home and die in my home. Randy? Nope. Cassandra. Okay, so you're so far you're winning against your malaria. You are not. Um, you're the one who is losing. 
Breach health, Nigh High Lord. This seems like a very randy thing. Oh, it is absolutely a randy thing to do. It was like, it was just the weird fact that it happened at exactly the same second. Not like, oh, it was one, and then the other one was like a second or two later. It was just like, merng, and it all went by. Merng. Mm-hmm. Attention. Yeah. Clean room to help with infection? Uh, I don't think that'll make a big difference. Like, right now, I just need them all to rest and all that. Um, I don't know if she's going to bed. I think she's just coming in to give attention because she just used the restroom. Yeah, because it's Friday, so she doesn't have... Well, I mean, technically it's Saturday. She doesn't have work tomorrow, so she'll probably stay up pretty late. Or she might be hanging to bed. I'm not sure. Oh, I see what's happening. Because I increased all of them, they're not cleaning up or hauling now. Um, yeah, we'll leave it alone. Go get some food. I need you to stop. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Our doctor has food poisoning. So one is going to take a long time to actually get to the point of treating people. And then... On to, wait, actually, you can also doctor? Oh, I guess you're both pretty terrible at doctoring, so I guess it doesn't matter which of two. Now, granted, I would rather you not treat the person than immediately throw up on them. That's not... It's not really the best approach to, uh, to treating people medically. Seven percent. We're probably losing someone here with a malaria. Oh, all food poisoning gets into major food poisoning. When you, uh, when you play RimWorld and you get food poisoning, it goes trivial, major, recovering. That's just the cycle, but every, every single food poisoning will go through that. Yeah, so Harry is cleaning up the room. Some people might find it uncultured to throw up on the patient. Yeah. It's something. Oh, you're not cleaning up the floor. You're smoothing the floor to make the room nicer. We'll see if we manage to keep you both alive. Okay, can be tended. Who is our best doctor? You. I have no food. Because... Oh, that is a real big problem, actually. Um... Did it knock down both of my people who deal with food? Please tell me you're not one of the ones with malaria. No. You just are currently dealing with food poisoning. There being the malaria, not particularly well. Um, and we're going to change our assignments. Raw food is allowed again.
I need you to harvest stuff so people can eat. We'll see if they manage to keep beating it, because this one is mostly only winning because we had the Preach health on them, which ran out. Um, and now the Malaria is slowly catching up on them again. I don't think they have enough lead to do that. This one's this one's getting really bad ten, so it's slowly losing ground as well. Because that food poisoning is absolutely obliterating us. Because they just keep getting more and more of it, because more and more people are getting sick and we're not getting it all cleaned up. You need to be fed. There you go. You know, I've got I've got herbal medicine. We just don't have particularly good doctors. Alright, so you got a decent tend, you got a decent tend, that'll help. Um, you're gonna wait a while to attack. I'd rather you not attack at all, but I don't really get that choice. Hey, if you can get involved in this, come on, Vanquish, go after them. Okay, Vanquish did not take the bait. Um, alright. I don't really want you involved in this, but right now I don't have enough people to not have you get involved. Especially with how many of our people have food poisoning right now. Why did time slow down? No, leave the dog out. <sighs> You're a jerk. Are you the four? I... I mean, you're the person in that spot. I need to get my people back to bed so they can get over their malaria. Skilly mean roll? Uh... I don't... The best doctor has a four. Um, you're up to five, but yeah. Alright. Zone animals inside for raids? I don't really want to, because then I have to keep zoning and unzoning them and zoning and unzoning them. And I'll kill off all my animals before I do that, because I get really tired of doing that kind of thing. What I need to do is just make a bunch of sleeping spots so the huskies don't sleep outside the area. Medical treatment is needed on you. Why is my doctor not treating you? Still winning by just a little bit. Okay, you're you're solid. Um, yours is probably going. Uh, you might actually get a chance to pre heal them again. Um, and you are my best choice for trading. We have a great bow. Go and take all the clubs we're not going to use in the wake up. 
and the smoke leaf. I'll take your herbal medicine, we're hurting for it. And I'll take this. Because that'll give us a little bit better food. Don't, don't major break risk. You're sleeping, you're not in daytime. Not even a full percent ahead. No, just barely a full percent ahead. Okay, so you're gonna make it. Nihai Lord is losing now, is officially losing at this point. Um, I might be able to get one last Preach Health off to get just a little bit more time in there. But unless we get a really, really good tend, Nihai Lord is not gonna make it. Come on, like 90%. 24 is not a good tend. Come on, come on, come on. You're more than a percent behind. I don't even think if I can preach health to you, I can save you. We're going to try it anyways. Assuming you live long enough for me to do that. I think it's just too late, though. Yeah, I know it's too late. You've got less than a percent to go till you're dead. Yep. Oh, early game malaria without a doctor. The death of many a colonist in my runs. All right, so let's go check what we're missing now from the queue. We've got our mining, we've got our construction, we got our art, we've got our growing person, we got our cook. Okay, so that was our extra crafter. But yeah, that's always that's always a risk. It was kind of we kind of got done dirty that it was like malaria right at the same time, so we couldn't bandage them immediately. Like we tried to do it, but it just didn't happen. At least it wasn't the doctor. Yeah, I mean, doctor is very relative in this place. How many huskies do we have? Three. Major break risk because your friend died, that's fair. And all the rooms suck, which we're actively working on. Got absolutely screwed by the malaria. Yeah, no, even if they offered me a mech resurrection serum, the problem is before refrigeration, unless you already have it, 
it's too late. By the time by the time you get it and bring it back, the body's not going to be fresh enough to be worth risking it. Because the longer the body goes unresurrected, the more and more likely you'll get a bad outcome. Or it'll just be ineligible if it's too far gone. Alright, so we're getting it all hauled into this room. Is the Huskies breed fast? They do. Very quickly we'll get to the point where we can't maintain the training on them without more people, which will be a whole problem, but um, we'll worry about that when we get there. So Itchy Tenma is currently doing that. We'll set Itchy Tenma to prioritize cleaning over hauling, since they're very clearly hauling. So we can try and get this place cleaned up to not be nearly as bad. We got more food poisoning because incompetent cook. They're learning. It's understood. <laughs> Just... Just th they're just throwing up everywhere, making an absolute mess of this place. I'm gonna allow him to start sewing that. So you can get a prisoner showing up here that has paralytic abasia, and they're willing to give me a person who is a sanguine misogynist who's industrious and has a bump, like a busted up leg and arm and asthma. No. Um. This library's gonna need to be named to Alexandria. It's gonna be my luck. Uh... Paying attention that you're a prisoner. I can work with that though. Um, so what we can go ahead and do is say structure, do this furniture, tuck that back there. It is for prisoners. Capture that person and convert them to our ideology. If you deconstruct a chem power generator, you get the fuel back 100%. You thought it would be lost? Oh, I would have figured it would have been lost as well. Alright, and we have to keep them for what? Seven days, was it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Insulting spree on Kira Liz because pain. Because food poisoning. Lovely. Alright. Ambrosia sprout, that's fine. Well... At least you started the fight and you were the only one who got hurt. And it wasn't serious. That at least seems fair. I'm also curious why you're not going to bet. There you go. Oh! 
Oh, that was your brother? Oh, that's not going to go well. Um... We're gonna have to uh, try try and console them on that one. That's a lot of debuffs. All right. And we made them even more upset. Excellent. The exact outcome we wanted. Alright. Rip family member? Yeah. We can get a telescope and get them recreationing outside. This one might be over. No, we're nowhere near that. We've only lost one person. It's definitely not a great start. <laughs> but, like, that's just always the danger when you're playing, you know, like, Tribal or whatever, and you get malaria early game if you don't have a good doctor. Um, that's just... That alone will wipe out a colony real fast. Which we tried to use, like, the Preach Health and everything else to buy us with time, but we lost by about half a percent on the on the one person. The other one survived. All right. Ryan, you're recovering from your fight. Which is why no mining's getting done. We're definitely going to need more people. The big thing is these insults. If we can get these insults to drop off, we'll be in good shape. Insulting spree is always absolutely a disaster. I just plan to expand that that way too. All right. Do they all drop off at one time or slowly one after the other? Um, I want to say they start... Yeah, so you can see where it says it starts dropping off in 10 hours and that finishes in 13. So it isn't... Isn't all at the same time as, like, when they happened kind of thing. But, um... It isn't a huge window of time. Oh, goods trader coming through. We have family visiting. Ship the stars. All right. Okay, so we can sell these trace amounts of leather. Um. Got two books we can get. So prioritize hauling that in. Where did the other book go? Oh, there we go. Oh, we don't have it on auto-rebuild. 
Okay. Miners, what about miners? Do they all drop off the same time? Oh, sorry, I already read that. Yeah, no, it's it's just after an amount of time. Apparently, Itchy Ten was also having a bad mood because they keep hitting on people and being shot down. Excellent. Perfect. Just what we need. ever get the lights put up? Oh, you know, I bet it was there and they probably destroyed it in the fight, like when he was tantruming. Yeah, so they start expiring soon. That's gonna be a while. And yeah, you should be just about done healing in a second so you can get food made so everyone's not whining about the food not being ready. Cool. Um, so you can go assignments, manage food policy, lavish, do not eat raw food anymore. We got actual meals coming in again. Labor outsourcing. They're asking for one colonist for six days and are willing to give me some standings. Who can we spare for a while? Honestly, Itchy Tenma will go themselves. Honor, Itchy Tenma. Warden? That's fine. That's easy enough to problem to solve. Alright, getting another title. That also gets them out of our hair for a little while. Okay, so we got complex furniture. Let's get complex clothing in here. So we have something that needs crafting. Um, we can also go in here and say furniture. Double beds. And for right now, I'll put those up there in case they don't finish those in time. They should. All right. That's one bed built. Two beds built. You're building the third one now. Okay, in a minute. I mean, we'll end up getting the prisoner out of here. That's one thing. Um, that'll be good. Because then we can go ahead and start building our, our library. Cool. The beds are all built. That's good news. All right. Structure, smooth walls. 
Okay, can't do that one that far out. That's fine. Yeah, so we're going to start having some of these negatives pop off. So that'll be good. But I like the idea of, like, in the middle of this room, put, like, a handful of chairs and a table for, like, sitting at for, you know, research or whatever. Um. And then, like, you know, the rest will just be shelf after shelf after shelf of books. Just because we can. Heat wave is over. Stop refueling that and deconstruct it. Yeah, slightly impressive dining room, so we are starting to get those. Okay, we're under attack immediately by person with grenades. We're, we're going to set some. You stay in area one, and we're going to go ahead and set that zone. Because what's ending up happening is they just keep always being outside the perimeter. And that's just making it a problem to keep them alive. I don't like needing to do this. So please get inside. Please get inside. Why are you staying at the door? Come on. It's like when you have the children in the game. That the children in the game will do the exact same thing where they'll just kind of stand there being like, what is the most dangerous spot? I'm going to go cloud watch here on the edge of the map, right where the raid's going to land. Oh, right, you're high in go juice. That's why you're just not going down. It's like, man, durable. Okay, got a couple of bruises, couple of bruises, and we're good. So the problem is that undermines the value of the animals a lot if I have to keep them restricted inside the area, because otherwise they can run out, grab stuff, bring it back. Wouldn't be so bad, but huskies are not are not particularly strong animals in this game. Okay, come on. Once we get these rooms carved out a little bit better, we'll do more of this. Yeah, so just minor bruises. It won't take long to heal. Alright. And get shipped the stars out of here. So we got a couple days to then and a couple days to that.
The Thirsty Mace. So it's just increased recreation. You know, interestingly enough, I could actually make the Grand Library into the rec room. So we put, like, the table in the middle, put the chairs around it, and some, like, sofas and all that. Um, with all that and just all the books around it. I'd see that working. It'll take time. The good news is Kira is getting to the point with their, um, their mining that they can actually go pretty quick. Alright. Just gonna tell them to do that for now. Just so they chop down the trees automatically there inside that area. As they're not doing other things. Okay. Yeah, so that's um that's constructed roof there. So I can make my air, like my freezer so that it empties out into this corner and it becomes an exterior space. So that could be really really handy. Put the two ACs there. Put a door here to access it. Then you know put the um put the what's the word I'm looking for? Put the barricades so that they can't drop pod that spot. Click a wall again? Yeah? Oh, what's the ornate door? That's new. It's a door that's... It's too wide. The catch is it has... You have to have gold for it as well. You can't get over the barricades. Nicely done. No one got hurt. The another important update: sleeping spots, spots, not beds, no longer block drop paid rotten. Yeah. And aren't targets for breachers? Barricades and furniture still work. Yeah, and I've never actually used the sleeping spots because that that would be the kind of thing that, you know, gets the point of like, okay, that feels kind of like cheaty. You know, at least being barricades, like I have consciously taken the time to build a thing and put the effort into versus just you know, being able to do the barricades, it might as well be like, yeah, I have selected that to be a non breachable zone or whatever. Like that would that's definitely not a thing that would should be kind of allowed type deal. Agreed. Physical furniture and all that blocking makes sense.
Let's getting this all sorted. Some better recreation. And it'll work in all that. Let's go here. Miscellaneous. Put the toolbox there to help out with the production side of things. Alright, we're getting like no research done. That's that is what it is. We only have three people here. We're not gonna get a whole lot of anything done beyond sustaining. But you leave in two hours and you show up, you come back in a day or two. That's fine. And little by little, we'll get out sword. All right, shuttle has arrived. Can I just sit here and say auto load and you'll just do it? No? That's fine. Cool. So we got the bonuses there. Furniture, bookshelf, uh, guinea pigs. I'm only gonna say no. Actually, can I, can I take that? Two man hand guinea pigs, ten year old child. Sure, let's gamble. All right, bio, tough, too smart. I can work with that. You know what, kid? You're acceptable. You're a solid acceptable. Actually, I remember the king. Can you can you get over barricades? I don't remember what the rule is with you. No, you are not blocked by fences. Uh, schedule. I guess grab the jade knife since I don't have anything else for you. All right, and with that, we can go here and go Q draw. And we've got our brand new colonist popping in here. And we've got Enoch here. Um, everyone else can be outside the perimeter, but Enoch stays inside the perimeter. Uh, we will get your permissions set up. So for right now, you haul and clean. So good news is we already got two traits, and they're not they're not that bad. Like too smart comes with its negative and all that, but we've got tough on them. They've got a passion for shooting. We do need to get them an actual ranged weapon though. Too smart so good though? Yeah, no, that's the whole thing. Like there's too smart and like neurotic and very neurotic that a lot of people be like I don't know what you're talking about. Lux. 
Hey, Fran Opossum, thank you so much for the raid. I really do appreciate that. And I'm and I'm seeing some Pankraru emotes, so I'm assuming that uh can't see that thing. We're not doing the deserter. Welcome, welcome. Oh, Toxinates? Yeah, but I don't want to use those. They waiting for an enemy to die from sickness. Um Yeah. But welcome in, Raiders. How was your stream and everything? It says you're playing I was a teenage exo colonist from what I uh from what Twitch is telling me. Um which I'm gonna hit yes on that because I saw Pank play that and it was absolutely fantastic. I have not played myself, but I've heard nothing but good things and from what I saw it looked pretty good. But I do hope you had You're so excited for Anomaly? Oh absolutely. I can't wait. Right now we're uh we are working on building a grand library. Just like an underground information archive. Oh, you have books, and it's way more than I can afford. I want all of them. Can I make it happen? All right, let's talk. Take the plain leather. Look. What do I have to sacrifice to make this happen? Yes, I'm selling steel for books. Don't judge. Is it a smart idea? Probably not. Am I doing it anyways? Thank you, yes. Mello Murmur, for subscribing for six months. Thank you, Mello Murmur, for the T1 sub. That's six months you've been sub to the channel. I really do appreciate that. I do hope you have been enjoying the stream and all that stuff. All right. Books. Where are the books? Get all the books. Bring the books home. Oh, you can't go out there. It's fine. Good trade. Books are Arcotech. Basically. Books books are fantastic. Everyone should have more books. Right now, we have only recently learned the forbidden technology that is basic furniture but this does mean i could finally start making shelves and all that for my books are all the books safely inside okay and we did take a loss because the game trolled real hard and had us trigger what what is what is oh i see you're like super not happy that's fine um, but yeah, so we had at the same time we got raided, like literally at the same instance, like malaria raid. Um, so one of the people who did get malaria didn't make it cause we don't have a good doctor. Um, so that's kind of our reality. Food poisoning. Yep. Food poisoning. Uh, so we're just trying to manage. We're still very early game. As you can tell by the fact they have just like this little, little spot here. But yes, for those who didn't know, like 1.5 uh, came out and We've got all these books that, like, they could teach you cooking and plants and all sorts of stuff. They're considered a recreation thing, so you get skills by recreationing. So it's really fun stuff. I wanted to make the shelves out of something other than wood. And probably not steel. I want them to not be flammable. But I don't have the ability to cut brick yet. And with a lack of researcher available, I don't envision that changing in the immediate future. So we'll go ahead and get our bookshelves set up. Alright, you're picking out food because you ate without table. Which I find humorous because there's a perfectly good table there for you to eat at that you are now actually using in this very moment. Ah, wonderful. Um, and we got our other colonist who's on their way back here. In half a day. But for those popping in, I probably should be introducing myself. I am Roll Storage, a new player of variety games here on Twitch. I'm most known for my exploits of Project Zomboid, where I used to hold a world record for the highest kill count run ever streamed. That said, that record has been beaten. But I do play a variety of games, and that includes what I'm playing right now, which is some RimWorld. I need to go through that and adjust that. But, um... We're experimenting with the 1.5 build that came out. For those who don't know, 
even though the DLC is not out, the like big update so far as like the underlying systems is. So it doesn't contain all like the new spoopy content, but it does include like where they've added books and a whole bunch of stuff to the game. Uh, and that's what we're experimenting with right now. The update adds a ridiculous amount of quality of life changes, which is fantastic. Like if we zoom out all the way, you know, friendly is like neutral or whatever is blue. Like you'll see all the animals outlines running around here. So they stand out. Hostels are red. Your pawns are like white. Um, someone having a break is green. So you can see that stuff at a glance. They now have it where instead of having to have mods, you can just go up to this and say, I would like you to mine all of that. And they'll mark the blocks. And as they mine, they will keep, you know, expanding that until there's no more of that material there. The accessibility changes so far are great. So many of the mods were accessibility and or quality of life. Oh, yeah. Like, for the most part, most of the mods I ran were always around quality of life. And now they're all just part of the game. So I don't, I don't need to get mods just to handle, like, the basic quality of life stuff. You only in our bed? Yep. Actually, can leave that on important. Go here and choose on books. So that way they put the books on the book bookshelves instead of leaving them over here. All right, we got our colonists back. But yeah, they also had a bunch of interesting things. Like if a person is ascetic now, they don't care about eating, you know, eating without table. They're just indifferent about it. Alright, so we got our crafter, we got our growing person, we got our mining person, we got our construction person, we've got our artist, we've got our cook, and we've got small child who will one day do things. One day. Travelers needs alms. Uh, they want four herbal medicine. All right. So give them the herbal medicine. And let's see if we can't convert Eonek into our beliefs. Made pretty good dents in it, but they have not quite switched over. They made it so, like, for example, where we're constructing stuff, they've made the, uh, the contrast much higher. Hey, Gamer Drew, how's it going? Need wood and wool? What do I need wool for? I mean, I'm, I'm growing stuff. Yeah, it's, oh, it's not wool, it's, um, cloth. Yeah, we're growing it. Books sound nice, it explains the stream tile. I feel like books are gonna be, like, low-key extremely powerful. Because, like, you can learn skills by reading the books as opposed to, you know, as an alternative to doing the thing, so especially it's tasks you can't always do. So like, we have this book here, it gives intellectual and construction to up to level 8. This book here gives us recreation. That book there gives complex furniture, which we already have. 
got recreation. We've got plants and cooking. We've got one that'll slowly teach us how to grow cocoa. Wool cloth, same thing. Nope, actually, wool wouldn't work. It's a completely different material in the game. <laughs> in this particular case, it must be cloth on this one. Whereas wool would not work. Alright, we'll queue up to hunt if anyone has the availability. Which they probably won't. But that's fine. Yep, studies in chocolate? Absolutely. Wait, why didn't why didn't you build that shelf? Alright. Yeah, so the idea is this is gonna be our grand library down here, and these will be our bedrooms over here. I don't have really a good person to be a dedicated researcher. That's one of the things that we could kind of hope for is Ianek is a child that joined our colony just recently. Um, it would be good if we could get them to be a dedicated researcher or like a dedicated mining person or a dedicated cook. Start splitting some of the responsibilities up a bit more. Honestly, even if we just got, like, Jogger and they were just the person cleaning, that would be fine, too. Dedicated a researcher are the myth. Priority for the whole colony. Build a research table. Anyone? Someone idle? Nah, usually I have someone who they're, they're married to their research desk. Their existence is science. But I almost always do tribal starts where research is painfully slow. So always trying to make that happen. You're like, we do have research queued up. It's getting absolutely nowhere because I don't have a researcher. And that's even with them queued at three. That's because we just have too much going on. We had an extra person that we lost. Um, but I haven't had a dedicated researcher. What I need to do is let some things not not get done for a while. Yeah, we lost someone. Yeah, we got hit with malaria the exact same second that a raid showed up. Um, and you get where that goes. Like we we fought it and we only lost by like half a percent, but that was using like the preach heal and everything else that didn't work. Yeah, no, I generally have my, um, have my people specialize. There's just so much benefit in having, like, a person focus on one skill for, like, the speed and proficiency and all that. It's really kind of hard to give that up. Oh, yeah, no, there's, there's definitely stuff, like, I'll put construction and mining together, um... A lot of times I will put, um, I mean, usually the cook will do multi-duty to begin with, and as the colony moves on, they'll become more and more focused on just cooking. But yeah, so like when we look at like research will usually be dedicated, I usually have the cook will also clean and haul. Um, construction and mining, I usually go together, grow and plant cook go together. Crafters, sometimes I'll do crafter and art together, sometimes I'll have just crafter, it really depends. Short on wood. Yeah, we just need more people. Base is getting too big for the number of people I have. Do 
They usually start with just one pawn, so they have to do everything. Specialize as additional pawns become available. Yeah, now when you have one pawn, you're constantly babysitting their priorities, going, okay, I need you to research now. Okay, I need you to stop researching. I need you to cook now. Okay, you've got enough food, so stop cooking. Go ahead. Like, whatever the immediate thing is, like, hey, I need you to go hunt that animal out there real fast to deal with the food. Like, you have to micro because you just don't have enough people to do stuff. All right. Cache of supplies. That disappeared. Yeah, it had nothing we cared about. All right. You like the micro, to be honest? Yeah, I tend to, um... There's times I can go for the micro, and then there's definitely times I'm just, like, not in the mood. Like, that that kind of micro could, you know, feel somewhat meaningful and whatnot. Versus there's a lot of times that the micro you have to do in RimWorld, it's like, you know, assign this a zone, like, whatever. You know, and all that sort of stuff. Like, do, like when it came to the way you used to, to do with Blight, where you had to, like, set them to a zone, and then set them to be priority cut, and, like, lock everyone in the zone just to get them to do. Um... I definitely don't enjoy that, because, like, I should be allowed to right-click and say, keep cutting the blight till it's gone, and that should be the end of it, because that's what I want them to do. Having having them, like, changing the zone and all that. But that's after, like, thousands of hours of playing the game. I used to do, like, all the little microing and all that, and, you know, it's just one of those things that that kind of micro tends to be fun in the short term and switch from being fun to like gradually becoming an annoyance over time. It's like trading Path of Exile. When you first start playing Path of Exile, you're like, oh, this trade is kind of quirky. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like the novelty of it. But then after like, you know, 10 plus leagues, you're like, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. Uh, no, so Eonek was someone who showed up. Um... Who was it? It was Night High Lord. Uh, Malaria got them. But Eonek was a quest. So true of Path of Exile. Like, yeah, like at first, Path of Exile trade, you're like, this is kind of fun in a quirky way. But it's one of those things that every league that goes by, it gets less and less fun until you're finally you're like, oh, I need to trade to get this item to be able to like do one of the 40-40 things. And you just close the game. <laughs> it's like, nah. I don't feel like it. It goes from being kind of a quirky, quirky, interesting thing to being a pain point to being something you just don't even want to deal with. Yeah, and no, I, uh, I either play in solo self found or I play in what, you know, I call it like, you know, self inflicted solo self found, where technically I'm in trade league for other reasons. But, um, that generally I won't trade hard, like... It's one of those things that, like, sometimes in Path of Exile they'll have a league where it's like, okay, here is, you know, the challenges for this league. You need, like, Blight would be a good one. Here's the challenges for this league. You need to run a hundred Blighted maps. If you're doing that and grinding that you're on your own, that is absolutely absurd. Doing, doing a rotation with a bunch of other people, where we're all putting up one map, even that was beyond obnoxious. Like, I didn't end up doing the Blighted stuff for, like, a whole league and a half or two before I did our Blighted map because it's so burned on them. And I enjoyed the Blighted maps. It's just doing that many makes them not fun anymore. But yeah, so it's kind of the same thing with me when it came to, like, microing the things. I enjoy the microing your pawns in a fight going, okay, let's put the people behind cover, okay. You know, you target, like, when I feel it's like, oh no, we need to target that one. That one's a real problem. I enjoy it. That's good micro. That's meaningful micro. Um, But, like, little stuff like your, your animals standing outside the perimeter. It's like, when a raid's popping in, you're like, come on, man. Alright, so we got two more books. Can I make... I actually... Can I make these books happen? Take my side tea.
You don't understand. The books are more important than food. There will always be more food. But will there ever be more books? We don't know. Someone says, weirdest thing happened? Okay. Is that melee skill? The book on fencing? It... Weird. It's fencing... Man, lynching. Brain food greater than stomach food. Who needs food anyway? Nurture the mind before the body. Did you have to restart stream? No, I did not restart stream at any point. Did you lose your stream streak or something? If you just got dropped, that can just happen sometimes, unfortunately. Nah, it's because I have so many fields of food on them now, it's like, that's fine. If I have to sell the food to make things happen... You went to bed shortly after you started watching you, woke up, and the window was on our stream? Weird. Nah, I didn't, because... Because even if I had stopped stream or stream got reset, it wouldn't take you to another channel. I mean, if I raided out. Unless it was, like, last night that you just forgot a day or whatever. All right. New lovers, Itchy Tenma and Harry Paul. Um, our ideology, I don't think we have it where they can share beds and all that. Like, I just, it's not that I deliberately avoided that, it's just not the default. Oh, good. That'll be perfect. Well, we got a ranged weapon for Eonek. It's, uh, it's a bow that shoots fire, but you know, that's fine. What's, what's could possibly go wrong with an 11 year old playing with fire? Those two things just go together. It's like water and oil. It's like cotton candy and vinegar. Can hunt with it too. They can hunt with the bow that shoots fire. You never tried a flame bullet as a regular weapon? It's not a good time. It does have the advantage of you can hit someone and catch them on fire, which makes them panic. But also, it tends to just light everything on fire and create a whole big mess of problems. It's almost exclusively utility uh, for lighting things from, on fire from far. Yep. Maybe now would be a good time to invest in your fire break around your wall. This is fair. Now is probably actually a good time to build the fire break. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do is go build roof. For those who don't know what I'm doing, is I'm basically doing an area that's four wide that they will get rid of all the trees because they'll put a roof over it and what that'll do is it'll make it so 
All right, so you have a bow. It'll make it so when um the fires go, it won't spread over there. Oh, a tree started to grow into that spot, I see. Hey, don't shoot the dog. Come on, man. And Itchy Tenma is going to immediately switch bows to the one that doesn't shoot fire now. Why is it every time with the dogs? I don't know. I've come to accept, you know, Rimworld, they joke about how, like, evil the people are. It's just farther supporting evidence. That they always, like, go out of their way to, you know, hurt the dogs and all that's like, very clearly they are actually evil. It gave me fires there, it be a good idea. Reminds me, uh, you love the change to the fire stomping priority? Uh, I didn't notice there was a change. Is that oil on the ground? Yeah, it's just, it's a graphic that they do for the, uh, the bow. It doesn't change anything as far as I'm aware of where it comes to where it can and can't burn and how well and all that. It's, you know, aesthetic. It's kind of just an alert to be like, hey, this isn't, this fire isn't naturally happening. <laughs> Supposed to be a puddle of chem fuel? Yep. Pretty sure it's more than just graphic? Maybe. I don't use the fire bows very often to like really know one way or the other. And then most of the time when I'm dealing with the impids, it's not their flame bows that I have to worry about. It's them running over running up to me and then hucking like fire spray in my face that I have to worry about with them. Gotcha. Is this yours chem fuel, just boom loat milk? Well, you can make chem fuel by other means. Chem fuel is just Rimworld for flammable liquid. Because a one can hand a chem fuel container gets warm, it explodes in fire, so it doesn't just light up it, it's actually an explosion. Then you have the boomalope actually make chem fuel. Then you got a thing where you can turn, like, you know, logs and potatoes and all that into chem fuel. So it's just a catch all for flammable liquid. Actually, let's not do that. All right. So bear with me, chat. I need to use the restroom real fast, so I'm going to quickly do that, and I'll be back here in just a minute. So thank you again for tuning in. I'll be right back. Well, that's not going to help us. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's probably fine. That'll almost certainly not have any repercussions for us, having the entire group of guests who are going to stay... Uh, um, die from heat stroke. My colonists are doing fine, so I don't know what their problem is. Maybe they should just have made themselves out of tougher stuff. I better not die from that. 
I hate crawlers. Well, that is our first zombie injury. I... Uh, okay, just clarifying, that mole rat came out of the dirt, shot into orbit, and then fell to its death. Um, could someone clip that? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. I did not expect that to do that. My, my apologies. Stop it, eyes. I need you to cut it out. All right, so oh, we have... are back. If you remember correctly, Anomaly, they added new wanderers uh, joined New Game Plus. I um, wonder how quickly they go through shipbuilding with that. How quickly you can go through shipbuilding with that. Um, it's, it's kind of like starting with a brand new group kind of thing. Um, like, literally as if you were to hit new run, but already have this there. Except it keeps your ideology, because we did a bunch of experimentation with that yesterday. Or was it yesterday, or was it the day before that? Whenever it was. We did a bunch of experimentation with it about, like, seeing which ways you could go. Because it... Oh. Chow is being extremely generous. Like, you know, gifting, like, it was a big hype train, gifting subs, that kind of thing. Day before, Royal Ascent. I probably won't do the Royal Ascent, but we'll keep that on the agenda. For right now, I can make that into an ideology room as well. We're working on that. What game was the train one? Uh, it looked very interesting. Oh man, what was the name? I think I still have that game installed because I always meant to pop like not not on stream, but I always meant to pop back into that. Do I still have it? Something like Railway Empire or something like that. Um, Railway Railway Empire Two is what that game was called. It is really really good. Um, it's a tough one to stream, but it's really, really good. Oh, I should test it. Keeps the research. Oh, it keeps the research. Yeah, yeah. Very genuinely, it's like getting a um, man in black. It's just, you know, getting a brand new set of colonists. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not sure what we're gonna do when the husky population starts to get to be too much. I haven't. I haven't decided that. We'll probably have to like just reel with that. Sell puppies. We could do that. You feel that way about Rail Route? Uh, very interesting game. Not a whole lot of graphics. Yeah. Now the problem with this one is. This is true of like a lot of like tycoon, those type of simulation games. So I'm talking simulation, I'm talking about simulation in regards to like, you know, building a zoo, that kind of nonsense. That a lot of them, they have as part of their like cycle, um, there's just downtime or like slow time where you just kind of like watch the thing build up. Um, and it wasn't that bad for that, but there was a lot of, like, setting up your production lines and, like, kind of waiting to see where things shook out kind of thing. So it ends up making it kind of difficult to stream because it's a little slow. Ah, Eunuch reading their book over there. We need there. more books. Oh, and more. We need more lumber. Yeah, now the lumber, the lumber's happening. We're getting it planted. I don't have enough farming people. Um, and they're cutting down some trees as they put up the fire fire break. So that's actually what things are gonna do. I want it to be on the inside of the kill box as well. Cause 
that'll help keep some of those trees from growing in. I have noticed because of the way I made this kill box, they are all running over to this side. I am going to have to change this kill box a little bit. So all we got to do is change the kill box. Then you go right down here. Then you go right there. And that should fix the problem. Because that'll make him run, want to run right down the middle, because that's the way through. In most cable boxes, you put a grow zone of hay inside. Yep, we have a grow zone of dandelions. We just don't have enough time to do it. Does the roof prevent growth of grass and stuff on the ground? Yes. So what will end up happening is all of this area where right now there is, you see like there's a little grass up here and bushes. Um, that'll just be left as stone and dirt when it's all done. It takes a little bit for those things to die from lack of sunlight, though. It'll be the same thing here, where all this will turn to, like, dirt and whatnot over time. Now, the issue is I can't fully fill this out because I'd have to build a column and then that gives them cover. What if you made it so the dogs can go outside, but not in the kill box? So the problem wasn't the dogs being in the kill box. The problem was the dogs were, like, wandering out here. And being attacked rather than going to the place at all. Now, you always put stone floors uh, to do fire breaks, but it takes so much time and resources. Yeah, no, if it's like long term, I might put down stone. But yeah, just slapping a roof over it'll do it. You do concrete. Yeah, the big the big concern is though. I try and remember. Yeah, like, the dirt walk speed and everything is, like, 87%. Yeah, so dirt gives, like, a little teeny tiny bit of a slowdown. Whereas if I take the time to put down, like, a wood floor or concrete river, you get full speed. Inside the kill box, that is. What's the purpose of flowers in the kill box? Just to beautify while in combat? No, it's to prevent trees from growing in. Like, I could also pave it or whatever. But, like, this kill box, in order to reach the middle of this room, I would need a column. Because, you see, that can only go out one tile less than that. Same from this side. So, I would need columns to build up the middle area, which gives them cover. Uh, so, I could plant the flowers instead. Which now I can go ahead and clear this out. And then the flowers are nice because the dandelions, they plant them and they take them a long time to die. Um, so it's not very labor intensive. But yeah, no cover for the attackers is basically the point. Annex converted? Uh, they are not. We'll get there. Made a masterwork dining room chair. Love to see it. Okay. Yeah, those three will be fine because they'll dig up there. All right. Let's see, maybe make it so they can use the kill box or can't use the kill box doors. So, to, to clarify with the animals, the problem has nothing to do with the kill box. Um, the problem is they go outside this area, which I do want them to do to retrieve stuff, but then they'll just kind of stand around here, and then when a raid comes up, they'll kill the animals before doing anything. Like, they won't go into the kill box. I have to manually be like, animals, you know, because you can't grab an animal and say, hey, animal, go that way. 
I have to go in here and go animal zone, change your zoning, do all that stuff. That's the problem. And it's not that big a deal. It's mostly I don't like having to do like that kind of babysitting of the animals priorities and all that. Transport pod crash. So rescue them. Yeah, it's saying we can hold a funeral if we want. No, we're getting like almost no research done. Uh, we didn't particularly have anyone well suited for research to begin with. Um, and then when we lost people, it was kind of even worse. All right, go go over there. Yeah, you'll be able to reach both sides of that wall over time. Wasn't there a red alert mod uh, that I'm going to switch zones or anything? There probably is a mod that does that, but um, I don't have it, so it doesn't do me any good. Nor would I particularly want, want one. There's the defensive positions for your pawns, but that doesn't affect animals. All right. Is Marin a good researcher? No. But they're a good doctor and they're iron will. So if they do join, like this would be someone worth bringing. Like if they join, I would definitely not be unhappy with it. Okay. Because really, we just need people. If they don't capture or force her? Probably not. I typically don't. Not unless I'm like really desperate for something. I probably should make a prison. Right now, I'm trying to make the bedrooms. Like, don't get me wrong, I've overcommitted on this library and I know it, but also, I want the library. Um. Uh, meanwhile, we will build a roof. So it covers that as well. Okay. Do you really want to lose such a good doctor? You gotta remember, I don't I don't play the game to min-max. I like to play the game where we're not all e evil psychopaths who are out to do everything against everyone we see. Um, that's just my preference. I used to uh I used to do like a lot more like the cannibalism runs and yada yada yada. Um Yeah, no, I know there's a tiny gap. I could have filled it in, but I chose not to. There's going to be a lot of books. That is the plan. But um, for me, I would rather play it, you know. It's fun for me to, instead of RPing as like an awful, terrible, you know, horrible person, to RP as some, like not RP, but to play it as like a normal person. Because one, the game's harder that way, and it's more interesting. Normally, I actually take the, um, one of the things I like to take is I like to take the guilty, um, ideology because it does give you a pressure that says, hey, if you do awful things, your people are going to be pissed off all the time. But yes, you'll generally find, I will only, like, nowadays, it used to be different, nowadays I'll usually only take a pawn that, um, I really have need for. Like, if I just really need. Alright, what do you got? Undergrounder, nudist, pessimist. You're not winning me over. Um, I mean, they got cooking and construction, which are helpful and all that. But a legendary SMG and that. Uh, so what we have to do? We have to just keep her around for a while? Sure. I'll take a legendary SMG. Ooh. 
You say you can make a tiny gap. Oh, I could? Yeah, not worried about it. Honestly, most of the time I literally just have the person come in, I patch them up, and I send them out for the uh, reputation and the mood bonuses and all that. As opposed to, like, keeping them, you know, forcefully converting them, doing the whole shebang, which... No, like, no judgment about people playing the game how they want to play it. Like, absolutely no judgment. But that's the whole thing, is... I have the way I prefer to play it, and the way I prefer to play it is that I'm not, like, you know, not, not a raging psychopath. All right. Yeah, I know we'll get there. Right now, I just want to keep going for the rooms. If we end up getting someone who needs to be tossed in a cell, I can always shut that door, let them in the library as the um as the prison for the time being. Once you get bedrooms, those work. Hey, Shibito TV! Thanks so much for the raid. I hope you had yourself a good stream and all that good stuff. Thank you for the raid and welcome in raiders. Um, and Chipito is playing, it says, Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're looking for that content, you can find it over there. That said, Twitch does like to get it wrong. Let's see, uh, was putting wires through the smooth wall vanilla or modded? Vanilla. You just had to smooth the wall first. But yeah, so if you're looking for Dungeons and Dragons, you can find it there. That's assuming that's correct. Twitch, Twitch do like to lie about that and be off by one. How goes 1.5? It's going pretty good. We did take an early loss from Malaria, which sometimes just happens. But otherwise, you're doing RimWorld? Gotcha. Like I said, Twitch do like to lie about what people are playing. But we are starting to work on building a grand library and all that kind of thing just because we can. Alright, White Jaguar, you have a good one. Oh, did I change the defaults? I don't remember if we did. I need to change the defaults. Health. Do this. Change defaults. There. Alright, we're almost done mining out the steel that's back there, then we'll plug up this wall. And really, you'd want to fill this in so it's not eligible for infestations. I'm not gonna worry about it. If there's an infestation there, we'll poke a hole in the wall and deal with it. I mean, or they'll poke a hole in the wall. Someone will poke a hole in a wall. Um, make sure moss is set to blue meds. Might not have updated. Oh no, I'm I'm fine with them being on um Oh weird. That's weird that it put you Yeah, you're a guest. It's really weird, because normally a guest it sets them to herbal. At least I want to say it used to. Alright. Yeah, so get that last tile of, um... As you're worried about infestation, if you remember correctly, the low bound is, um, minus 10c. Oh, I'm not gonna sit there and, like, make a giant freezer room just to prevent it from doing that. There's other ways. Like, if you want a trick to prevent them, you can just do something like this. And just do that through the whole room. You don't actually have to fill in every tile. Uh, we have not converted Eonek yet. Yeah, we'll get there. I'm used to playing with Prolicizer, which we actually have, um, and just basically attritioning the poor people down by just constantly harassing them about their ideology. I don't... I don't know who I tend... Oh, is it because I tended to this person? Ah, yeah, it was. Because I tended to the guest, we gained a bunch of reputation for him. Yeah, so that's one of the things nowadays, is because I didn't take this person prisoner, they're a member of another faction on the map. Um, They did gain a reputation now. That's a change they added. Yes, yet? They haven't left yet. They're still... Yes, no, I take that back. The one... Right, they did leave. That's fine. 
Imagine trying to survive and this one preacher just won't shut up. Exactly. It's highly effective. And they go, you know what? Look, if I, if I promise to believe the things you're saying, will you leave me alone? And they're like, yes. You're like, fine. I believe what you're saying. Just go away. Um, all right, I'm going to take two seconds. I'm not going to bother pausing. I'm just going to take two seconds, uh, grab myself a new drink, and I'll be right back. So I'll see you all in just a minute. So thank you again for tuning in. And we are back. You said that 13 Doctor left? I'm not. It's fine. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Like, we don't... Rimworld, you don't have to be off. You don't have to, like, jump on every opportunity. Who would ever trust a 13-year-old Doctor? Oh, it wasn't 13 year old, it was skilled 13. It was a very skilled doctor, and don't get me wrong, I could use a better doctor. This is true. Um, but then I gotta go and make a prison, which means I just gotta like, take one of my rooms and set it up for it. Uh, we would lose standings with the neighbor because we would be taking their people prisoner and all that. Um, and I'd just rather not. It's just not necessary. I'd rather become allies with a bunch of my neighbors and put that thing. All right. Being older than thirteen? Yeah, no, it was they they mistook when they said thirteen. They were talking about skill, not age. It was a really good doctor. I have a playstyle I prefer. I could go and, you know, do all sorts of awful things to get ahead, but just not my preference. All right. Imagine with all backup you'd get if they knew you'd patch them up after and let them do whatever. This is twice we've had two events happening at the same time. And we're not running any mods whatsoever, by the way. We are we are completely modless. Um, and this is the second time we've had two overlapping events trigger. So we've got two different caravans showing up from two different directions. Yeah, no, it's the unstable branch, but it's just like it's an interesting issue to have for um, the events to overlap like that. Because that's what happened, is we were playing as Cassandra, and when it rolled, we got um, a raid and malaria simultaneously, like, in the very same second. So it's like, okay, something something's being a little funky. So you take the side T... And the trace amounts of your stuff, so give me the money. Ticks aren't ticking quite right. I think something's gotten out of sync, and where it's supposed to say, okay, it's time for a good thing, it's like doubling up. Like, whatever, whatever the system is behind that says, like, okay, good thing, here's a good thing, that something's happening and that is effectively queued up twice or whatever. All right. Her 
that are the event lockers and locking time. It's a royal trader thing. It's interesting that deliberately I could make a problem here where you could aggro one of them and get them to fight each other kind of things, but it wouldn't be particularly useful for my cause. Like, a cat, like I'd get a benefit immediately, but then I'd turn around, I would have made a group into probably an enemy, so it wouldn't be worth it. To get a quick payout to have a big pain in the butt later. Oh no, I'm not trading with them. This group, when you trade with them, they'll only uh, take prisoners or gold. They're not they're not a regular trade caravan, they're the Empire kind of people. All right. It was the IRS not the better business group? Oh no, it's, it's not even like a tax thing. It's you may, if you would like, throw money at them to gain yourself standings. Yeah, it's more of a bribery thing. Exactly. Uh, if you misremember, losing thing, if you don't pay them, but are, no, you don't, I don't think you do. At least not that I remember. All right, Kira Liz, you sleep well. Thank you for tuning in all that. Yeah, no, I don't believe you get a penalty for not giving them stuff. It's just, you have a couple ways to gain ranks with the Empire, and one of those ways is to just basically dump gold and, you know, slaves on their laps. And they'll gradually make them allies. Well, they're gradually getting you your your ranks or whatever. All right. So Ianek is aging it gradually. So we're getting there. They'll slowly get that room sorted out to get this grand library thing going. I keep doing that. For the record, this is going to give us an absolutely obnoxious amount of wealth. Like, I actually wonder what it's going to say for wealth in this room. It's actually saying impoverished, which is surprising. I wonder how it's only at 404 wealth. A lot of those books cost well over 300 each. So it seems like once I put the book on the shelf, it's not counting for the wealth the same way. Because we look at, for example, this content on this shelf. That book alone is 160, 150. So that already puts us over that 404 for the room. So I think the books literally don't count for their wealth once they're, once they're shelved. Which is kind of an interesting curiosity. All right. Okay, so we'll have the person who's our construction person work on all that, getting that smoothed out in the meantime. 
Maybe to try to avoid a tailspin once you get the library going? I could see it being a thing, but then it's one of those things that, like, wouldn't you just make the books worth less? Or have less value? Because there are items you buy that, um... That the amount you pay for them is well above what they're worth. I mean, I'm fine with it, to be clear. It's just kind of a head-scratcher is all. You're like, oh, okay, that's a weird decision. Alright, we're definitely going to need stone cutting soon. Yeah, you, you age up at 13. Tell them to build that so they go on the other side. Oh, you can leave this door open. That's fine. Okay. Think about the doggo issue. If you combat train them, uh, drafting will recall them to the master. Yes. The ones that are trained. So it's stuff like the puppies and all that that are the problem. So like right now, of the dogs, these two will definitely do it. Um, I think the attack will... I don't think the last one will. It's... Yeah, no, you have guards. So they would all come back right now. You just You have to have them trained before they go there. Yeah, that out. Have a good rest of the stream. Well, thank you, Gamer Drew. You have a good one. So, which bed is the nicest bed? Got an excellent bed. Just gonna reinstall that excellent bed. in there and we'll tell them to smooth this room now all right let's see so I'm says you should get the game again last time you played um an animal taming had just come out yeah a little bit's changed since that happened <laughs> You used to do some real broken things with animals back in the day. Have your army of a hundred squirrels. You could defeat almost any raid with just chickens by having just obnoxious numbers of chickens. A muffalo has self-tamed. Keeping kibble. Uh, that'll give me a pawn who is a wimp who is delicate and not a genie. Um, they're just a delicate wimp. Whereas Goji's... Oh my god, that is a terrible pawn. Um, it had 11 mining, but like, was just the entire collection of health problems. Think ourselves another rank. And we'll get ourselves some good weapons. Mining is such a mid skill anyways. I mean, if we're if we're making an underground base, we do need the mining. That said, mining is a pretty straightforward skill to level. Um, it's to me most of the time, 
like, because I don't do that many, like, dwarf-style bases. But, um... Could have been our 99. I don't... I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, underground base? Yeah, most of the time I don't do the style base that often. Like, we do it once in a while. I actually tend to like to do, like, uh, swamp bases and all that stuff where the ground is terrible, so I have to build lots of wood walls and, you know, people endlessly go, oh my god, what about pyroman like pyromaniacs and, oh my god, how are you going to handle the fire? And it's not that I never lose a run to fire, it's pretty rare. Oh no, as long as as long as you're not that worried about it. The um Like the fire's honestly not that big an issue anymore to deal with. Like don't get me wrong, if you get if you get a colony that's got like three pyromaniacs and one who refuses to put out fires and then you choose the swamp, you're gonna have a bad time. But as long as you got like three or four people and all that, you're alright. Yeah, mod uh for better bridges, so you have considered doing something? Yeah, and I usually don't even worry about the um, better bridges or whatever. Like, for me, I like the fact that I have to, you know, deal with the fact that the ground is crap in the swamp. And there's trees everywhere. Now, I've made the mistake of doing the swamp mat with the people who won't cut down trees. That's a bad time. That's a real bad time. That is a, why have I done this to myself bad time. <laughs> Oh, let's change that. Let's not do it that way. Oh, that autosave is clicking. Always get ya. Uh, do you play with many mods? Nope. I very it's not that I play with no mods, but I usually go extremely light on the mods. It's just my personal preference. It's interesting that up seems to be very different from the other directions. No, it's not. It's just the way it visually looks to it's different. Well, there's two mods you saw? Oh no, I... The thought of, like, a ton of mods stresses me out. Yeah, no, generally, generally I run very few mods. Um, they're probably talking about Kenshi as I was running a mod pack, but that's because it's the only way to get a lot of the mods in Kenshi these days. Because uh, so many mods have dropped support over the years and got bundled into larger packs that now handle it. So it's not that I want those, all that junk. It's just the nature of Kenshi mods these days. That's a poor quality bed, so get rid of that. Alright, so we're making a proper, proper reading room. Oh, that'll be perfect, actually. Yay! And you're next now in with the rest of us. Alright. And we'll end up putting actual lights there later and all that. Is Moss already our ideology? I don't believe so. They're not they're not an actual member of our colony. I'm not gonna put too much effort into it. They'll be gone before I have a chance to reasonably flip them. That's kibble. 
Yeah, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, Itchy Tenma is one of our original colonists. So yeah, they're, they're our ideology. Alright. Do that. Yes, yeah, so I need tons more cotton and all that. What I need is for you to age up. So I've got another person working around here. And I need to have someone I need to be... Like, I need to commit someone to research. They're the leader? I don't... Oh, you know, they're the moral guide or whatever, yeah. Yeah, this is this is saying that they have like a rank in our in our ideology. So they're our moral guide. The marriage is on. Harry has proposed to Ichi Tenma. Ichi Tenma agreed and the two are now engaged to marry. Yay! They'll get married at some point. All right. Cargo pods. Oh, good. A whole lot of blood. Yeah, marriage spot. I do not. I actually usually don't worry about it or particularly care. Because marriage is such a rare event and there's not like a a good or bad where marriage ceremony in the game. Like it's not like rituals where you can have like a bad outcome ritual. Um, So it's just not like that big of a priority to me. All right, so there's a good quality bed. Okay. Now you mentioned you kind of wish there was more to marriage. I could go for that. Like, it would be kind of fun to me if in the game, your different ideologies, they had different wedding ceremonies that kind of thing that had different nuances with them just to keep it more interesting add some variance to it all right You guys really like what you got going on at the base? Yeah. I do try to have, like, at least a little bit of interesting design and aesthetic. Like, way back when I was doing nothing but, like, the challenge run type of stuff, like, you know, 500% naked brutality, everything was a rectangle. It was just all about, you know, what what gives me the best results, like, purely min-maxing kind of stuff. Um, and I burnt out on a lot of that. And so now it's like, nah, it's gotta look good. Is there a way to make books? I don't believe so. I am curious if we will be able to when the DLC drops, but to my knowledge, no. They haven't said anything. They're by 13 by 13? Yeah, no, that's the whole thing. It's like you would design them with like specific sizes and everything in mind because that was like the optimal way of doing it or whatever. Um, I used to do the challenge runs where you're like doing the ridiculous difficulties that you would do trap mazes. You'd do the thing where you did all the traps on one side and you have all the uh, barricades on the other side to cause your pawns to zigzag, their pawns to go straight across the traps. Because you kind of had to do that type of stuff when you're playing in those super duper sweaty settings. Um, which is why I don't play in those settings anymore. Because you get tired of all your bases feeling like they're kind of the same thing, just in a different configuration. Or different arrangement. Versus, like, every other run I'll do a different shape for my rooms. Like, a lot of times they'll be, they'll be like, this shape but smaller. 
This one are having like these little pod kind of shaped things. Sometimes they will be rectangles. Sometimes they'll be like odd zigzags or whatever. But do you watch a lot of challenge runs uh, on no pause stuff, but you're not a fan of them. So my playstyle is a weird mix of meta stuff and then theme stuff. Yeah. That was, um, it doesn't happen much nowadays, but there was like a pretty regular thing that I would play like not only RimWorld, but RimWorld as well, like games that come up. And people are like, your bed's in the wrong position, streamer. And you go, what do you mean? It's like, your bed is not in the right position. If you move it closer to your door, your pawns can save a tile walking. And I'm like, here's the deal. <laughs> if that like if that matters, that that's going to be important to my run, I'm uninstalling the game. Because that's some nonsense I just don't care about. <laughs> You're not a fan of playing them. I gotcha. Yeah, no, if you ever if you ever have to get to that, like you see uh the talk roll there getting timed out. And they keep going banned. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. Like when people sit there and you know go Like it's one thing to say, hey, did you know this? It's like, that's fine. Like that doesn't bother me. But it was like, streamer, you're doing it wrong. It's like, come on. <laughs> Here's, here's one of the things we say on the channel. Hey, are you having fun playing the game? Congratulations, you're playing it correctly. Oh, did you open a bunch of cheat and hacks and like, you know, just load up like the best weapons on your character in an action RPG and just delete the entire screen instantly, like 10 seconds into the game? Are you having fun? Congratulations, you're playing it correctly. Now granted, that doesn't sound like fun to me, but that only matters if I'm the one playing it. Enoch is reading? Yeah. I've seen Enoch reading a number of times. They're getting getting a whole lot of learning going on. I I also found it amusing the number of times when I was on the world record run in Product Zomboid, people tried to tell me how to play the game. And you're kinda like you wanted to sit there and be like, you do understand, like, this is the highest kill count run ever streamed. Like, the run, the run you're telling the person how to play right now, <laughs> that is like, like, there isn't a run with a higher kill count. Because I had people, like, swear up and down, it's like, oh no, you, you can't use short blades. You just can't use short blades for any time. It's like, no, hunting knife's my favorite weapon in the game. Like, my character shows that I have more damage done with a hunting knife than any other weapon in the game. Pretty sure you can. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't sound right. Pretty sure that everyone who plays different from me is doing it wrong. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, not some. Um, that's the whole thing. Like, it's it's fine if you're like, hey this way of playing you technically get whatever bonus or whatever improved sure i don't know i guess for me like the reason part of the reason i have little patience for that kind of stuff even before streaming was just the number of times i dealt with software development you'd have someone come in and be like whatever whatever the new language or new tech stack or new framework or whatever would come out and people would piss and moan on whatever you're using because it's not the newest thing and how the newest thing in some theory or philosophy or whatever is better. Um, and then talk down at you the whole time and you'd get tired of it. And you'd sit there and go, all right, well, hear, hear me out. You can talk about all like the philosophical ways your tech stack is better. Um, I've also delivered on all my deadlines. When was the last time you did? And it would shut them up real fast. <laughs> Um, and man, I went through that conversation. I couldn't tell you how many times because I'm down to have like the, the theoretical philosophical conversation about the pros and cons of different technologies against each other. But the reality is 90% of them die in the theoretical. Um, like it's, it's. I would talk to people, we'd be trying to advise people to be like, oh, well, what, you know, I'm starting this new project, what technology stack would you go? It's like, okay, you're hiring a team of developers, like, you've already got people in mind. What are the, like, what's the tech stack they know the best? It's like, oh, we want what, whatever's the best. I'm like, yeah, what they know the best is the one they're going to make the best quality code in. You should use that one. Unless, like, that tech stack is very specifically a poor choice for whatever reason. Like, you know, 
if they're like doing web development and they know C++, it's like, okay, you can do web development C++, you, not Leafy a good thing. For subscribing for two months. Thank you, Leafy Pew, for the Prime Gaming sub. You only get to use that one place in all of Twitch and you used it here. And that means a whole heck of a lot. So I really do appreciate that. That's two months you've been subbed to the channel. I hope you enjoy your advertising previewing as well as access to the emo. So thank you for that. And thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, it's a good comeback. Oh man, I had this one person. One of, one of the things that happens in software development, especially when you have someone who like, they were the smartest kid in their class in like technology, like when they're in high school or whatever. And nothing wrong with that. And they will start their first job in the industry and they're used to being on the top of the pile. And so you hop in and they still have that chip on their shoulder from being on the top of the pile where they probably legitimately were the smartest one in that room with the technology. And then they show up at like work for people who've been doing this for a living for like the last 10, 15, whatever years. And they still think they're the smartest one in the room. And you kind of have to be like, hey, just so you know, as you're talking down at all of these people, you're yeah. the new person here. <laughs> Has the rover been finished yet? It has been finished. We did we did finish the rover. That said, we do have a new kit. Uh, if you're looking for the pictures of the rover, we did post it in the announcement channel on the Discord. Um, but the rover's in like the other room now. But yeah. Um comes back to the academy, visit the ultra condescending enterprise chief engineering. Oh yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. And it's and it's you understand, you can kind of you can kind of like you try to give them a little bit of leeway where you're like, hey, you need to adjust your expectations a little. You were the smartest person in the room you were in. You're in a new room now. <laughs> I'm not saying you're not smarter or anything. Like we're not we're not getting into this measuring thing here. The point is you're acting like you are the smartest person to others you may not be smarter than. <laughs> and it's kind of just rude. Uh but that reminds me, I do actually have a new Lego kit. So let's see, we got the 100 bits that I owe for well actually the 100 bits I owe a Lego piece for. I owe a Lego piece for the sub. Um, I owe a Lego piece for, we had tier one sub earlier, because I totally forgot about this halfway through today. So I owe three Lego pieces. So for those who don't know what's going on, every single time I get 100 bits or a sub, then um, we put a Lego piece in the kit. Come on, camera, actually work, please. Thank you. Because uh, sometimes it likes to change its zoom. And the game is still running. If we hear a noise, it'll pause. It's fine. Uh, so we got three pieces I owe. So I've got you. That's one piece there. Yay. Three, I count four. Okay, so that's one piece. Um, and thank you, Leafy Pew, for another hundred biddies. And yep, that adds another Lego piece onto the set. Let me change the page. All right. So I gotta figure out this spot. So that means I have three more now. I was down one, but let's go. So we have you, you, and one of these things, and then four of these, right? Yeah, four of these. Um, I do set it up where if um if I finish it, I switch cameras, and then someone gives me a couple more bits or whatever. We just wait a little bit to do it. Um, that way it doesn't get to be too disruptive. All right, so, and that's one, two. And three. And that catches us up. Okay. Because that was, after I did the last one, it was the remaining three I had. So we did put a total of four pieces on during that time. All right, but it's good seeing you. Yeah, and you're right out of school. They probably don't have the experience, which is a value separate from raw intelligence. Right, that's, that's kind of the thing that, um... Ooh, I actually don't remember. It might just be plus. Um, a mountain base? How unlike you, Rawl. I know, right? Um, yeah, so we are doing the push for the plus program. Uh, so that's the thing down there in the bottom bottom left. Um, that For those who don't know what that is, Twitch gives a 50-50 split of revenue for subs for content creators on tier 1 subs. And it is a thing that we are pushing to get what's a 60-40 split and all that kind of stuff. Uh, did the sub work? Uh, did the prime sub work? It was 49 before. Uh, we had a sub, like a regular tier 1 sub earlier. 
Um, it only counts self-paid subs before you. Yeah, only self-paid subs, tier one, two, and three. So if you gifted subs, it doesn't count. Prime subs don't count. Bits don't count. And I'm only saying that kind of thing. Like, I still appreciate all that support. It all does help financially pay the bills and all that. But if you're trying to help with the part, uh, the plus program push, it's just basically the tier one, two, and threes are what count. Uh, tier one's one point, tier two's two point, tier three's six points. Um, but we are going for that. We are literally at exactly halfway through, like we're basically halfway through the month and we're halfway through the push because I have to get 100 points three months in a row and we are one month in halfway through the month at half as many points as we need. So we're like basically exactly half on everything. All right, so we're getting all that sorted out and we'll leave the normal beds. Those ones we won't bring through. We'll bring the good ones. We'll replace the normal ones. But it's kind of weird. I'm sure they have the reasons. Oh, if there's... So the Prime gets to be a whole complicated thing because they give out free Prime subs temporarily and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and the gifted subs are... The reason they don't let that happen is let's imagine I'm at 80 points and we're one day from the end and go, crap, I don't have another stream before like months over. I can just gift myself... I would... Or sorry, I would have been able to just gift myself enough points to get across that finish line and just now I'm good. Um, and it very genuinely for a lot of creators would be worth it to just gift themselves the subs they need to get over. So they don't let you do that. And you can say, oh, well, then you can't just gift your own subs. But then it's like, okay, well, now I can just ask someone else to gift me the subs and then, you know, compensate them in some way. You know, whatever is and isn't allowed. So they just went, no. Um, and, you know, fair enough. Temporary workers. You want me to send you one colonist for five days? Sure. Uh, or like your partner gets them. Right. It'd be it'd be too easy to work around. Does it suck that it works that way? Yes. It's also something like it doesn't even need to get to like the nefarious side of it. It could very genuinely be one of your community, just a single person in your community could literally buy your way into the higher split. Which, again, maybe they shouldn't care about but i get i get that they want it to be like a community thing that you need like you need enough individuals to support you to get there again not saying i necessarily agree with that but i understand so itchy tenma keeps gaining titles and we still haven't got them set up with their initial one that's going to be a problem let's see there's also the fact that they no gift subs are temporary while sell subs are more likely to be renewed so they're looking for streamers to bring in more guaranteed money right that is absolutely a thing a gift sub i would say 90 percent plus of gift subs um that is all the longer that person's going to be subbed is that gift sub it'll fall off and that'll be the end of it that said sometimes those do ultimately the person gets a gifted sub they hang out and then they decide to buy their sub from then on it's not never, but it's definitely more the exception than the rule. Whereas if you go to sub yourself, you are very, very likely to renew your sub at least once. It's one of those things that I know, I know a lot of people, they talk about how big gifted subs are to them, and certainly it's a big part of your revenue. But, um... A lot of people talk about like how how important it is that people give so it's like well it will bring some eyeballs back to your channel so it's good news but i just think people actually overstate the value of that versus like you know any any other support like it's not that it's bad in any way um but it's not inherently better um are you literally this this is literally no this is a different one i thought it was the like, same exact person that crashed here before that we rescued and i was gonna be like wait a second I'm also surprised by how many people I'm getting that are popping by who are blue. Oh, she has a mask on. I would say who are blue and have genie like set like traits other than the tough. I was looking more at the intellectual, but are not genies. All right, normal, normal, good. So we'll reinstall the good bed.
All right. And then we'll add orders, smooth surface. That'll be another room for them to uh, take the time to get smoothed out and done. Good luck at your push. So far, you've been enjoying the stream? Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's been going pretty well. It's certainly not locked in or anything, but I'm feeling a lot better about this month than last month. February being a shorter month was super stressful. Um, it's also those things that January and February are usually the worst months for getting um, stuff like subs and bits and gifted subs and all this kind of stuff. Because, you know, everyone just got out of the holidays. A lot of people just got back from trips that maybe or maybe not they were budget conscious about or, you know, they just got gifts for their family members or maybe themselves or whatever that, you know, stressed the bank a little bit. Um, so everyone's pinching their pennies a bit more, a bit more tightly. Um, and then on top of that, February is a shorter month than every other month in the year. And you think your sub runs out soon and you're broke? That's no fun. You know, and the economy. Yep. Mm hmm. But, um, so as well as things that, like, very much February is like, I don't know if I was going to make it. Because we were, we were something like a week away from the end of the month. And I was still sitting at, like, 60 out of 100 points. It was like, oh, no. Like, I'm not going to make it. That is, that is one of the things I'm curious. Is come May, which is when, when... And your crippling broken tooth? Yeah. Dental's no fun. That's expensive. Um, come May, there's going to be a bunch of people who were making their push for the Plus program who, for whatever reason, fall short. That, you know, they don't they don't get their 100 points or whatever, and it gets reset. I would not be surprised if at around that point we see a bunch of streamers who couldn't quite couldn't quite cross that finish line that that is that is like the demotivating demoralizing thing that gets them to to stop which it's a bummer because on the surface like it's nothing but good news of what twitch did saying hey we're going to offer you more opportunities to make more money you know and that's that's like you know it's just positive on the straightforward with that but just because of the nature of things don't be both my doctors All right, so tend to that person real fast. So we got another round of malaria. We're we're just over one year in this colony. This is our second go of malaria. We are not on a tile that has a high high rate of disease. Picking on the child, Cassandra. And the other thing is Ichi Tenma's not here with the title. I think we'll be okay on this one. You feel like the disease gets borked a lot? I feel like we'll be okay on this one. Um, Yeah, you're not going to be back for four more days. I could take the title from them and give it to someone else, but they'll get a really bad mood penalty. We will if we need to to save people. But we'll see how it goes. A little bugged procs too often. We've had weird things of both good and bad events, double proccing, where we'll have like a raid and malaria happen simultaneously and two trade caravans from different places show up at the same time as well. Um, it's not been every time, so I don't know if there's like something something finicky going on with that. If I did give someone else the title in the short term. I don't, I don't have anyone with any decent amount of so like literally the best person with social is Eonek who's a child who can't take the title. Everyone else has like one. We're gonna do it. Um, You're gonna take the title temporarily. Because we're going to need that to save Eonek. So we're going to take the title and we're going to give it back, which means both K Kirillas and um, Ichi Tenma are going to be pissed off on the other side of it. But it's going to give us a much better chance of saving uh, Eonek 
Like, we're not doomed. Like, we could get some good, some good tens and that'd work, but the first ten was pretty bad. So we're trying to make up for it. Transport pod crash? Sure, why not? What do you got for me? Okay, that's not my favorite. Oh man, I mean, you're a researcher, so I guess... No, you're banished. Right now, go. You're gone. I don't- I don't even care. Just no. Just no, I don't want it. They're a psychopath. They have cancer. Um, they've got a neck injury. I mean, their ideology is whatever. And they've got, like, they can't care, they can't social. I don't really want to deal with that, because they're going to pick fights with everyone. Why are you not being treated? Go to bed. Here, your bed. your bed's now a hospital bed. Go to bed. Gonna die from malaria because you're busy drawing on the floor. I need you to get better tens than that. I also find it interesting that no one is rescuing you, despite lack of restriction. Bad doctor is a bad doctor. Yeah, I mean, they're working on it. They're getting there. Very slowly. The pawn's AI is also not interested. I guess. Like, they popped out and it's like, man... You're just not a good time. That's, um... I very much have strong opinions about the fact that they, like... What are, what are you doing? You're cheering up the patient. That's fine. Go to bed. Don't... Don't get up. Are you cheering... Stop cheering up the patient. You're all trying to kill yourselves. Go to bed. Why are you trying to cheer up the patient for literally ever? Go to bed. Ah, oh, those bad tens. <laughs> Just one bad ten to after another after another. Alright, so Ianek is winning theirs. Why are you not in bed? Okay, Harry? No, it's like, I was gonna get ready to take them off it, but I was like, no, you're actually the good doctor. I don't- why- why are you endlessly in rec- I don't understand. It's it's literally Harry is just running back and forth and the recreation is not changing. Oh, it's because Harry is just trying to social interaction them. That they're so bored of social interaction, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you're gonna stop stop that. Go to bed. Here. Your bed is a hospital bed now, go to bed. 
It's because they're so bored with social interaction that it's doing nothing for the Harry to talk to him. And needed? I forgot I even had a Mufflo. I'm not gonna worry about that Mufflo. Okay. I don't know why it's not mentioning that someone needs medical help. Why is there no... It's it's because they're in a medical bed right now. So tend to them, tired travelers. I will deal with that in a minute. Okay, an actual good tent, finally. Alright, so let's look at that. So we got Tired Travelers, except... Um, drop your weapons. We actually have one who's a decent doctor. That's fine. So you can handle animals, that's fine. Don't bother cooking. You're not going to hunt. There's some good news for you. We actually got... Ooh, you can research. So you're going to research. All right. So you're winning yours. You're losing yours just slightly. All right. Don't care. Uh, we're not running TTK. No, no one running 1.5 is going to be running TTK right now. It's not going to work with it. Any refugees good enough to keep? Uh, if they want to join us. Um, nervous Fast Learner, that one's fine. Body Pierce Recluse, honestly I'd take them. Yeah, honestly I'd probably take any of them. I didn't check any of the hell stuff. Yeah, none of all be worth considering. There we go, an actual good tend. Now you just do that to Enoch as well. 40... You're winning again. Medical emergency. Is that an attacks immediately? Yep. I wonder if they'll just kidnap Klein and get off the map. That is a thing they'll do sometimes. Nope. Alright, um... No surprises there.
All right, time to move up equipment a little. There we go. So that way they're not running. So I need medical treatment. How are you? You're doing okay. Where are you? You're doing okay. And you're both fed. Is no one going to treat you? No? Okay. That's fine. Yeah, no, because it's barely staying ahead. Feed your neck immediately. Don't let them get it all hungry. And your neck's going to pull through at the last possible second. All right. So do do we not want client? No. They were a whole basket of bad news, so we just let them die. It was a pawn that was forced on us. So I opted to just leave it alone. I was looking at the rat thinking is the other one. Medical treatment needed, that's fine. Food binge, that's fine. Yeah, no, I actually really don't like the events that you get people forcing you. Which granted, normally it's be like, okay, they show up, I don't like them, we banish them immediately. But um, in this particular case, because they had the paralytic abrasia where they couldn't move on their own. Um they force themselves on me and then I wasn't allowed to reject them or like wasn't allowed to banish them so we just left them out there food binge on Eonek yeah so a bunch of people are upset that you know a colonist died but no one actually knew the colonists so they're not that upset about it Finally getting a little bit of research done around here. All right. Cut that down, cut this down. All right, you sleep well, Luxray. Thank you for hanging out.
Okay, can make it out of jade. Don't worry about stone, wood, or steel. Uh, yeah, right now we'll just make all the things out of jade. It'll be excessive. We're gonna do it anyways. Colonist has returned, so Itchy Tenma has returned. And the very first thing we're gonna do, because you're gonna be upset that you lost your title. He's gonna go right back and say, it's my title, you can't have it. All right, so we're switching the role back over to Itchy Tenma. We just had, um, had Kirillis grab the title temporarily in their absence to help out. Cool. So Kirill is going to be unhappy they lost the title. That's fine. And we tried to we tried to say like, "Hey, don't worry about it. It's like you losing the title is fine." And they're like, "No, I'm upset." It's like, "All right, that's fair." Um, why are you still not why why is it so impossible to get people to get why are you not going for medical attention fine i'll make the bed a hospital force you manually to go to bed and get one of our doctors to pop in here to try to help and i'm going to kick you back out of that bed <laughs> Like, it's one thing when they're on, like, a mental break or whatever, but it's like, nah, gonna do my research. You don't understand. I don't care that I'm bleeding everywhere. I need to do my research. It's like, no, please. Please stop bleeding all over your research. You're not helping literally anything. Okay, and there are huskies running everywhere right now. The shuttle has arrived for Kibble. So get Kibble out of here. Where are you? So if somebody's about to break, you can always anesthetize them. Well, the problem is you don't know for a fact they're going to break. When you're looking at this kind of stuff, it is a risk of breaking. But yeah, no, you can you can knock people out. Like there's a couple things. Like if someone if someone you have is like just something you can't manage right now, you could like make them go into a cryostasis pod until you're in a better situation to deal with them. Um and it will like kind of store their bad mood stuff until they're back up. But you can literally have them like in the cryostasis pod. And then when your character gets the thing where they get the psychic power to like clear one negative mood thing, you can have them pop out, hit them with the negative mood thing, and then immediately put them right back in. But as far as, like, if someone died or whatever, I believe all those timers stay, stay, like, they don't advance while they're in cryostasis. But yeah, there's ways you can get around some of it. Actually, let's cancel those for right now. Saber wood. Yeah. I mean, you could. But then they'll get, like, a mood penalty for feeling sick and all that when they do get back up. And a lot of the really nasty mood timers aren't short. Like, you know, when someone dies, it's like 15, 20 days or whatever. You can't keep them knocked out that whole time. I don't, I don't think it'd be worthwhile to burn the medicine and all that stuff. 
Uh, no, I don't believe... I can't remember if you can anesthesia someone while they're recovering from anesthesia. But, um... Like, there's lots of side effects. Like, it'd be a very laborious thing. Not to say you couldn't use anesthesia to, like, kind of... Like, try to mitigate it. I don't know how effective it would ultimately be. And it would worth be worth the effort kind of thing. You start surgeries and cancel them, I think. Yeah, but at that point, where you only maybe have a risk of breaking, and even if it's a high risk, you might just get hides in room. And so you're doing all the stuff burning medicine to try and counter that. You're better... Uh, to me, it'd be better off just to let the break happen. Get that catharsis for the plus 40 and not have to worry about it for a while. Because there are certainly awful breaks. The fact is it's RNG, so you don't know if you're going to get a break that you don't care about, like they're going to go tantrum and like bang up on their wall a little bit, or if they're going to beeline to murder someone or what break they're going to get. We need warm clothes. That's understood. We should be way farther than we are in our research. But I don't have a dedicated research in my people. And we were getting some, but then this person got beat up in that raid. Which is fine. I'm just building way too much base for the people we have. Would you do that after break happens? But then you trivialize breaks and they wouldn't be as big of a deal. That's and you can actually do something. Like there's a psychic power you can blast people with that when you hit it, not like it it'll knock them unconscious based on all that. So we have betrayal offer that they're gonna give me stuff I don't care about. Excellent. You don't understand how this whole thing works, do you? All right, and Moss is about to get out of here. Just needs recreation. Social interaction, 95% bored. Yep. They're like, I'm not looking for anyone to talk to. Go away. And everyone's just rotating through who's going to have a conversation with them to make sure they're entertained. <laughs> yeah, and no, I like the psychic power because like the, um, the more severe the break is, the more psychic energy it requires to knock the person out. Um, and the longer they get knocked out for. So it's one of those ones that's like, okay, if it's a little minor break, it can be worth using because you hit them with it they get over their break in like seconds and they get back up in like one or two in game hours and you're good. But if it's something like extreme, like I'm going to go murder one of your other pawns, you hit him with it, it basically knocks out the person who is using a side power with how much it knocks him down. And then also it knocks them out for several days. And it feels like there's a certain balance there going, okay, is it better I have this person completely out of commission, this one semi out of commission? Or I let this person just ride out whatever they're doing. Where is Ro? There you are. Alright, it's time for an upgrade in equipment. Equip the legendary bow. And equip the legendary submachine gun. And hold those back. Alright, so we got ourselves some better tech. So that's good news.
Now this really feels like a library. Is everyone getting their books out and then leaving them just wherever? I hate it, and it also is very fitting for a library. <laughs> You can try telling... So, right now they're doing fine. Like, yeah, they're upset about losing their role, but they're very solidly here. I'd wait... I'd want to wait to see someone, like, hit, like, the warning down here and go, oh, that person has a bad one, let's deal with it. Versus just hitting them with it because I can't hit them with it. All right. They're getting more trees planted. Just need a librarian to get upset about the book abuse. Well, in theory, the whole colony should be upset, considering we are the libra we are the librarians. Um. <laughs> so, it would be fitting if it was our guests leaving the books out, and every last one of our colonists were just like glaring at them the entire time. just barely contained rage behind their eyes. Storage, no raw materials. I was letting that go for a while. We still haven't built the shelves because I don't have the wood to spare. Hey, what you guys reading? Just everyone just shh. The fact that they're just literally books strewn everywhere just feels way too real. All right. They're not just left there. That that's how they say their seats. Oh man, like in college. And to be the one person who picks up the book to move it to sit down and everyone just kind of looks at them like you're breaking the rules, man. <laughs> no one's going to say anything, but you're you're breaking you're breaking the rules. No one to spare. It looks like a lot of empty bookshelves. Hey, we have our priorities. We literally sold all of our food at one point for books. Not even memeing. Literally, that was a decision that we consciously made. We're like, we need the books. <laughs> it's common courtesy. At least we're getting trees planted, so they'll start working out for us soon. But the goal is to make this room as ridiculous with the number of books in it as we possibly can make it happen. Okay, so we have... Is that our main ideology? What 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 is our ideology's rituals? Um, we have... Sky Lanterns, and that's basically it. So we will want to go here and go temperature, campfire, um, have... Oh, I'm not gonna have enough wood anyways. Hmm. I was like, we'll just need to do that. How, how close do you need? All right. Here's the plan. You are going to cut down half a forest by yourself. Uh, that's your evening. Have a nice evening. And then I'll try and do the Sky Lantern thing. Because I would like to do that Sky Lantern thing. I had, didn't bother looking. Did you? 
Did you deliver and then just walk away? Oh, you're not my constructing person. Uh, that was... You. I need slightly more wood. That's annoying. We actually do have enough wood, but it's not going to detect it because it's not in the storage. Alright, change of plan. We will uh, raw materials. And then we'll have you haul the wood back so it counts. And then we'll do our Sky Lantern thing. Okay. And I'll tell it, no steal. Thank you for the uh, follow. Welcome to the stream. And it'll tell it, no more steel. Stop putting the steel in that room. Hey, it was beautiful, and we gained a couple points in our ideology, and people are just generally in a better mood. Cool. Now we just need to get all that stuff everywhere to get that all sorted out. Six points, pretty good haul. Yes, it is. Yeah, depending on what ideology memes you go with, different things will give you different number of points and be effective. All right. We're finally getting the research moving again. Complex clothing will be really, really good for us because it'll actually give something for our crafter to do. That's crafting. It'll also get us clothing, which will help improve our moods and make it more durable to the temperature and give us a minor amount of resistance to like cutting damage and everything. And then after that, we'll get stone cutting, because that needs to be compressed in some way or another. We can start making paths through this place. Then, with stone cutting, I'll be putting shelves in all these rooms. Because I really want to make these bookshelves out of stone as well, so they're not flammable, so if we do get a fire in that room, it's nowhere near as horrifically awful. And the husky population grows. We also need to build our hospital still. Which, honestly, usually that's pretty straightforward. I could put that, like, right behind the kill box. But that'll be where our hospital goes. Hey, they're gathering in the beginnings of the Great Library. So I gotta prepare for a while. I appreciate that you did not interrupt the wedding. What? Oh, they called off the wedding anyways, even though it's not an attacks immediately. Animals? Did you come with EMP grenades? Oh no, frag grenades. They just were looking a little blue to me. I was like, wait a second. 
What? I've had that. My favorite one was we had a raid. This has been a long time. Where it was like, I think it was four people showed up and all four of them had uh, smoke grenade launchers. And you just kind of went, wait, what? And you can actually get hurt by smoke grenades, but it's really not a lot of damage. Um, And so they're just like pelting out smoke grenades and you're just kind of scratching your head going, "Does why are you doing this? Why is this the way it is? Okay, release the hounds. You got some gear there, friend, that I would really like. Um, and meanwhile, you're kind of ascetic and you're an animal crafter. Welcome to the colony, friend. I'll probably patch him up and release him. Could, I mean, that dog's not going to get saved in time, unfortunately. They had two hours. If we weren't already bandaging them, they're not making it. You just... Prisoner. We're going to release them immediately. Well, actually... Yeah, that's fine. So, do the medical. What are, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping on the floor? Oh, okay. Can you do a funeral for animals? No. Okay, cool. That's enough that we gained the reputation and everything, so... We're gonna immediately release them. Get a reputation, we'll get a positive mood bonus. I'm wondering why my doctor seemed to be particularly bad about actually treating people right now. Like, we, we've got a person who's been laying in bed waiting for treatment and is not getting it, despite having, what, three different doctors, all with priority one? And, like, all the other stuff, like, there's the only priority one is doctor? Yeah, they finally got it. Eunuch became an adult! Okay, we get to choose two things then to be passionate about. Um... Quick sleeper. Alright, so let's look at the work schedule and see what is Enoch actually going to do around here. So you can grow stuff. You also have passion for researcher research. So congratulations, Enoch. You research now. He's like, now nah, you can do what I want. can stay up all night and eat ice cream. And most people, when they first become adults, they do that. And then they get really not good feeling a couple of times, and they go, okay, maybe I'll eat a little bit better than this. You're still gonna eat ice cream, just, you know, 
maybe not quite as much ice cream. You can do what you want as long as it's growing and research. Bow of creation. That is quite the relic. Um, it would be the other acronym. Stone cutting. All right, so we got complex clothing finally. So production, hand tailoring bench, furniture, chairs. Let's see, isn't the only difference between pancake ingredients and cake the frosting? Or maybe the eggs? Um, I want to say there's like ratio differences as well. Like how much, how much of each thing there is in the batter kind of thing. Uh, I got uranium in here. When we get smith um, smithing, we'll be able to make helmets out of the uranium and all that. All right. Hey, all the books got put away. Cake usually contains a lot of sugar and pancakes are relatively sugar-free because you're putting syrup on them. Yep. That's going to say is there's a significant ratio difference in ingredients. It's kind of like not actual Mexican food, but like Taco Bell, like Tex-Mex. It's kind of the same handful of ingredients, but the configuration and the ratios change. Take a sip. What's the worst that could happen? Like, and, and how you heat it up kind of thing. Because when you look at stuff like, for example, enchiladas, the only big difference between enchiladas and, like, soft-shell tacos is the sauce they put on it and the cooking method. Alright, so we got another attacks immediately. Uh, Rawl Storge is the way the, um, the screen name is pronounced. Ah, you're all still restricted. That's what's going on here. Went them the hall to all the good stuff out of here. Just no retreat? Alright. You always read it as rural storage? Yep. I get that a lot. Um, so they're wasters, which means they require drugs just to survive. Do they have gear we want? Not really. Alright. Sir, I'm going to need you to stop crawling on the ground. It makes me uncomfortable.
When the pond carries up its hall storage. It's interesting that no one put on the black jacket and all that, because that wasn't off a of dead pond, so it's not tainted. All right. This new crawling mechanic is going to make the most disturbing mod even worse. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Like, with the uh, the vaguely horror theme that we're going to have going on with um, Anomaly, I'm already not looking forward to, you know, you have your pawns like, infected with, like, the brain-eating parasite or whatever that you're trying to spread, or whatever, whatever horror nonsense they've got going on. And then that person starts crawling at you and you have to just open fire on them because if they get too close, you get, you know... You get sprayed with parasites or whatever, and then you're infected kind of thing. We have no idea exactly what stuff's going to be in there, but it's going to be some serious nightmare fuel. Which is perfect, exactly how it should be. All right. Join offer on Reek. Okay. Reek, let's have a look, buddy. You are psychic se psychically sensitive, trigger happy, who is beautiful, you're good at plants and research and melee and shooting, and you have a wooden foot, but that's not that big a deal. Yeah, welcome. Except, no question. So you're one of us. Um, were there any weapons over there that we can grab? Hey, you go ahead. Let's grab the poor auto pistol. Um, you can grab that, and we'll do this, which is... To draw and Soul Adams, welcome to the colony. Close your eyes, people to see streak time. Hey, a night dweller with the three stream streak. Uh, thank you so much for that. Get an extra 350 points, and thank you so much for the catching the last three streams without missing any. It's appreciated. Um, that is not the right person to be grabbing that gun. I demand you drop that gun at once. Um, that isn't your gun. That's Soul Adams' gun. Um, and with that, Soul Adams can now put hunting on their queue. We'll have them also focus on research. Okay. There we go. Is it else? Your record is 85. Oh yeah, we've got a couple that are like in the 120s, I believe now. Um, let's see. Your streak keeps getting reset, um, even though you've been here and it gets counted. Weird. I know. I know they've been having some issues with all that kind of stuff. Um, that sucks. Yeah, I don't know why, because I, I haven't been doing, like, extra streams in the middle that I can throw it off. That's actually one of the things that the streak thing has kind of done, is it's really deterred me from wanting to, um... From wanting to do, like, extra streams, because I know people who, like, really, really passionately care about their stream streak. If I do an extra, like, unscheduled stream kind of thing, I could very well be taking that streak away from them, and that could be, like, a huge negative for them. So loosely, it's been kind of forcing me to be better about sticking to my schedule. Not that I've ever had a real problem with it, but to like make sure I don't, I don't like commit extra streams that I probably shouldn't be in all that. All right. Okay, all the beds are actually taken up. Yeah, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, no, I mean, I get that. I mean, also, like, with, like, where they bug sometimes, people just lose their stream streak, even if I don't do stuff like that. Proud chinchillas. We just had to watch two in chinchillas. Itchy Tenmon. 
Oh, we can go here and say misc. Pen marker. And make the pen right away so we get the chinchillas inside before they run away. All right. That means they should get those chinchillas in here real fast. Did you build those walls or did you figure out how to smooth them? Oh, we smoothed them. You can see these ones are queued up for smoothing. Yeah, no, I like when we, whenever, we don't do a bunch of the um, underground colonies very often, but when we do, I usually prefer doing the smoothing of the floor. It's way, way more time consuming and laborious, but also, you know, it looks good. I used a smooth task from the floor thingy. It's refusing to walls. Yeah, so one of the things they did with the update, if you go to smoothing floor, it says smooth terrain. That's just the floor. It won't do walls. You can go to structure, and then you have smooth walls, which will do the walls but not the floor. And then you have under order smooth surface, which will do both. So it used to be one that would do all of them, but... um. I do really appreciate that they broke it up because that means I can go, okay, I want you to do the floors and you can just smash the whole building and you know all your floors are queued up or the walls or whatever your priorities are. You get the idea. So I'm glad they broke it up into to separate sections versus to what it used to be. All right, we're going to need to be due for a trade caravan soon. Uh, so that way we can reduce the husky population, find them find them new homes. Like, we'll keep some huskies, but, like, keep the population from getting too much in our area. So I do think the next thing we're going to research after we finish with the stone cutting is going to be electricity so we can get all of these torches and all that switched over to electricity. I don't think there was a geo... Oh, actually, there is a geothermal right here. That'll be good. Because then we'll be able to sit there and put that error. Found them, find new homes? That sounds like you're going to cook them. So that would be the alternative, is if we don't trade them away, is I would need to put on like the auto slaughter to keep the population under control. If we get a launch pod, heat all the uh, stones in our settlement. Would that be a gift or an offense? It would be a gift if we send them the stones. It just wouldn't be a particularly good gift because they're heavy and they don't have much value. It's when you send stuff like toxic waste or whatever that they get really upset with you. Your Tamagotchi beeps at you, demanding attention, threatening to poop pixels if neglected. Man, hitting me in my childhood. How dare you. <laughs> straight, straight to the childhood punch. Well, the, Tama the Tamagotchi, after a while, would literally turn into a piece of poop. Alright, so refugees left without any problems. Let's see, currently don't have any expansions, uh, and two of them are on special at the moment. What do you folks suggest? Gotcha. So, for RimWorld, if you're going to pick up Take one of the DLC, the, the two I would recommend is Ideology or... Biotech. Um, Royalty has some stuff it gives you, but I would definitely say of the three, Royalty is the weakest offering. Now, what's better, bio, uh, Biotech or Ideology? Them's, them's ones you're going to see people argue to no end. Um, 
Like, that's, that's the thing. Both of them are extremely good, you can't choose wrong, but which different people think are better will be very, very heavily debated. Man, I don't, like, if, if I could only have one of them, someone said, all right, here's the deal, million bucks. Now when you play RimWorld, you can only use biotech or ideology, and the other one you may never, ever use again. Would it be worth it to get a tunnel onto the edge of the map to Puma Refugee safely? Uh, not really. They'll usually get out on their own. But, um, that's... That's kind of the one. If I had to choose between the two... Ah, man. I think I would probably go with Ideology. But... It would be... It would be one of those ones that'd be a hard call. Because they both add a lot. Royalty, it'd be like, which, like, you have to choose one that you get rid of. It'd be like, royalty, it's gone. No second, like, no second thought. The only thing I'd really miss from it is the Zeus Hammer. Um, the Psychic Powers, not that worried about it. That's fine, whatever, don't care. Um, the Zeus Hammer, that'd be pretty sad to give up. I'd be a little bummed about getting up the Zeus Hammer. Like, don't get me wrong, the Psychic Powers are extremely powerful. But, like, to me, this is just coming from, with RimWorld originally... My my perception of RimWorld wasn't so much that it was, like, I don't think of RimWorld as, like, Warhammer 40k universe. It is. It is very much, especially now with all the additions we've had over the years. But when it first came out, I didn't think of it as, like, Warhammer 40k. Um, so, like, the psychic powers, when that got added to me, I was pretty crabby about it. Like, I didn't, I didn't sit there and say, oh, I'm not going to play this game again. It was one of those things I engaged a little bit, like, eh... Eh. Yeah, it was more Space Cowboy to me, so when he got Psychic Powers, it's like, what? The one to get rid of? Would you say Biotech? I really... Really, I really like Biotech. So you gotta remember, when you get rid of Biotech, you also get rid of the children and all that from... It. It's like, it's not just the mechs. It's the mechs, pollution, and the, um, the kids. All of those came bundled in biotech. That's the reason it's such a hard call. Doesn't that make it so much worse when you have like the kids as well, the feature? And genes. Yes, and the genes. So there's like a lot bundled into biotech. Versus the royalty, it's like you got the royalty like ending. No one cares about that. You got all the cool weapons that royalty added. That's 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 one that's kind of a, a hard to miss one. That that one actually hurts. Uh, to give up the psychic powers I personally like I said to me to me I'll do the psychic powers but to me it always felt like this weird attack like addition to the game which is unfair because it does fit the universe I just had a false pre like a false premise of what the world was to me which again was more like cowboy bebop space like space cowboys like kind of thing as opposed to, you know, Warhammer 40k. Versus the royalty mod is like very, very hard Warhammer 40k influence. Let's not make the duster, let's make the capes. The duster's better, but let's make the capes. I like the capes more. Even if they don't make sense. We need pants. Which the reality is, the game is all of those things. But still. Um, what hat? Fuller hats. Alright. But ideology doesn't the best to you because it makes things so much more varied. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if I had to choose one, it was definitely the one where I kind of sat there. Don't forget the mech clusters are royalty, I'm pretty sure. Oh, then we just go ahead and get rid of royalty. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, I think you're right. That said, mech, clust mech clusters have probably killed more. What would I say is killed in most colonies? Probably mech clusters are a strong competitor for what's killed more of my colonies than anything else in the game. But yeah, no, I'd definitely say ideology has the most impact in how you actually play the game of the of the DLC so far. 
Whereas I would argue royalty has had the least impact on how you play the game. And he also has the best for RPing thing, unless you want to RP psychic royalty stuff, then royalty. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. With the with the ideology where you look at your I mean, we only have one ideology in our colony right now. Like you can entirely change that. Is that true? It is not true. We need to talk to you about your heresy, friend. Imagine you're just trying to sleep and like your local priest just like wanders into your room at the night while you're sleeping. He's like, hey man. You you thought about joining us, right? We can't we can't let you live in sin, friend. You're like, dude, I'm sleeping. This is creepy. Get out of my room. Um Didn't royalty bring some quest mechanics? It did. To be fair, they all did. But yeah. Like, all the DLC adds stuff. But, um... It definitely, definitely felt like... Ideology and biotech brought way more to the table than royalty. It felt like royalty dropped, and they were, like, relatively content with it. And a couple people were like, oh, yeah, this is fun. And, like, a bunch of people were like, eh, a little underwhelmed. Because I remember when royalty dropped, there was... There was definitely a lot of people who loved it, and there was a lot of people who were kind of like, oh, that's it? Like, that kind of thing? And I feel like they definitely stepped up their game for ideology. Like, what royalty was, they just absolutely stepped multiple tiers up on what they offered. And then, you know, again, biotech, the same thing. They added way more systems in biotech by comparison to royalty. Or, sorry, by comparison to um, ideology. That said, it would still argue what they added to... Um, what they added with, um... I'm blanking on my words because I'm trying to do multiple things. What's, what they added with ideology was more impactful, like, for changing your game up. Versus, to me, with biotech, it felt like... For most runs, it's just the kids as the major change, which is a big one. But then you can get, like, a whole bunch of, you know the uh, xenobiology stuff, they can get really get really wild with that. Which is forgivable, the team's first DLC. I uh, really put a great product at the first price. Yeah, no, that's the thing. I wasn't unhappy. So, I'll, like, nowadays when people ask, they go, like, which one's the weakest? I'll be immediately like, yeah, it's the answer, the weakest one is royalty. Like, just, like, right out the gate. But that's more a compliment for how much better the DLC has gotten over the years versus anything specifically negative. Like, I did find the royalty mechanic, the actual, like, you get your titles, you get, like, your more impressive throne room, that, you know, I engaged with it for a while. It definitely was one of those ones that got more annoying, but again, that comes down to, I didn't care about the psychic powers, even though they are extremely powerful. Like, I cannot understate, you can, you can use the psychic powers to absolutely just cancel out certain problems and... You know, you could just sit in here and, like, be like, you know what? I don't feel like dealing with this. Make all the animals on the map rage out on the, you know, rage showing up and wipe them out for you. Um, there's, like, so many powerful things you can do with psychic powers. Like, they're really good. But, yeah, it is it is one of those things that, like, very much for me, it was always the one that I'm like, meh, but the psychic powers was always a weird one for me. And that's, that's me in my own headspace versus anything about the game itself. Um, so with that said... It is getting to be about that time, so what's going to end up happening is, for those of us over here on Twitch, we're going to go find someone for us to raid. I do stream from about 7 p.m. Eastern Time U.S. till about 4 a.m. Eastern Time, which does mean we're past 4 a.m. I'm going to go find someone for us to raid, but before we do all that, make sure you, uh, you know, you follow and all that stuff. If you have enjoyed tonight's content, you're not already following. For those over on TikTok and YouTube, the stream will be ending abruptly for you because there's no such thing as rating over there, so there's nothing for me to do. So thank you so much for all of you tuning in. Don't forget to make sure you like, subscribe, follow, do all those things you need to do on your various platforms. Um, meanwhile, over here on Twitch, we're going to go ahead and go to our ending stream screen and see who I can find for us to raid. But for those who don't know, I am Real Surge. I do stream six days a week, every day is but Thursdays. Um, from 7 p.m. Eastern Time all the way to 4 a.m. Uh, and I do play a variety of games, not just Rim 